Any Welcome to the show, everybody. We got another uh, great show lined up tonight for everyone out there. And um, as you can see, uh, the show has started off with a lot of drama already. We got my man Sean Hollis in the house. We got another guest in the house, and then we have the one and only, uh, you know who he is. Everybody's been waiting for him. Uh, the man from Trinidad, the man that tonight came on board and is causing pure bacchanal. Anyways, uh, I just want to say something before we get started. Uh, last week's show was pretty much like on fire. As the, as the kids would say, last week's show was fire. And uh, for me personally, I enjoyed that show so much. Uh, I, I got people who called me and, and they were like, yo, D, uh, they love that. They love that, that show. I don't know what it was, but maybe perhaps there's some people who just uh, resonate with, with some and some people that, you know, just got that thing with people. Mr. Hall, it how was, it, how was the was. week? How was the show last week? And, and why are you wearing those big, big great things on your head? I'm trying to hear you better. That's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have trouble hearing. I, I'm, I'm getting old. The show oh. last week was, um, I, I, it was so far best show with views, but it was the craziest show we've done. But that's Patrick. He's, he's kind of a, I want to say crazy, but he, he could get things, he could get things going. <laughs> Well, you know, I've been listening to a lot of people um, during the week who not listen. Well, listening. Yes, because you got to listen. You, you know, you got to listen. So I was listening to some people and they were like, yo, the show was just nice. Um, you know, I, I'll i tell you something, man. People is people. And they're just the people that love the people, if you get what I mean. And it's just amazing how when the people talk, how the people respond. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I, for some people, I keep using people all the time, um, you know, they, they're just drawn in um, by some, and, and, and that's amazing when it happens. And I guess that's what separates those out there, like the Maradonas. Somebody mm -hmm. online said, you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's the real difference with like Pele and Maradona and those type of guys, because, you know, there's something about them that attracts and um i think patrick husband is one of those those kind of guys um and just stands out anyways that was last week's show so we're on to this show i'll be on to the trini this week and um you know when the trini daddy come on, when the trini daddy come on set it's pure bacchanal this year so that we're going on right now and um so before we get the show started, is there anything you want to say? I, I know you talked a lot just now, uh, um, and we got a, we got a guest who actually wants to say something uh, just to to talk on the on the great man himself. But is there anything you want to? Man, I, I don't I, I, no, no, I, I don't listen. This show with Emmy Ransom, I want to hear what Emmy Ransom has to say. He's one of our great writers from the Caribbean. He started in the nineteen eighty. Till now, he's still writing, and um, he's he's won championships in Canada, Queen Split. He's won everything, almost, and over two thousand races. I want to hear this man speak tonight. This is a hero of mine from a youngster because he started a year of us. But when me, myself and Ricky Griffith were in the writing school in nineteen eighty for these for the um, Christmas meet, I never forget. Emmy Ram Sammy and Vaughn Charles, you know, but all the guys in the writing school were looking up to him back then, you know what I mean? And it went right through our career, the 80s, writing with him and that kind of stuff. So let's go, man. Is, is he good to go? Because we, we were having some technical difficulties just now. I, I was hearing him, I was hearing our, our interview just now when I spoke to him. So I'm hoping that he's, um, he's good to go. Good to go. Not. If he's good to go, he can nod his head and say yes, and I can see him right here. Ah, there you go. Nodding yes. head backstage is good. Anything else <laughs> is bad. So uh, we don't want to see anything. <laughs> but before we get the show started, man, um, we got somebody who that who wants to come on, on board and say something about the great man himself. So let's welcome him to the stage. Chris Griffin. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Let me, let me say uh, 
congrats on the show. It's been quite a buzz going around. Uh, the last few shows have been informative and uh, let's just say entertaining. <laughs> so congrats on that. And thanks for letting me come back and finish my story about Emil that when I was on, we started talking about Emil and then we got sidetracked and I didn't really get to go back to the story about how Emil was a big influence for me. So yes, thanks for letting me finish off that story. So let me no get problem, to it. Man. We were talking about, it was in the section, it was the part of the show we were talking about frustration. And I had said one of the things that had kept me going when I was at the height of my frustration was watching Emil because for as bad as I was having it, he was having it 10 times worse. And I would tell you, you guys, and don't take my word for it when, when later on go to Equibase and see for yourself you can look at any of the writers from the islands that went to Canada and the ones that you know the guys that eventually found some kind of success you could look at the start of any of us me Patrick Quincy whoever you want to look at and I would tell you nobody none of us had near the rough road that Emil had to go through Emil wrote, I you go back and check Equibase. The first two, three years, I guarantee you Emil will win 15 races. Mm -hmm. And this is this is not a guy that's starting out with the bug boy. Emil was already a champion, a national hero in Trinidad. Yeah. So for me, when I was getting really frustrated, every time I would feel like I want to give up, and I would look at Emil and it would keep keep me pushing. Like, man, if he can keep going. With the way he getting treated, I, I remember there's years Emil win one race and like and I mean like so for me it was in it that sort of thing was inspirational for me to keep going. And as far as jockeys, I I was saying that Emil is like almost a complete perfect jockey because he had all the it's not just the writing skill, it's the dedication, the weight control, the likability, you know, like just just everything mm. and. On top of that, of all the jockeys that I know, Emil is probably, not probably, Emil is definitely the most charitable jockey I've ever been around. And when I say charitable, I don't mean tax write off charitable because, you know, in North America, after you make a certain amount of money, you get taxed more. So your accountant might say, well, look, you, make, you got all this money, you're either going to give it to the government or you can give it to a charity, which is, you know, for the guys that do that, that's admirable. But that is not the same. That kind of charity for a tax write-off is not the same type of charity that I'm talking about. And I'm sure a lot of the people that are going to be watching this show tonight could probably attest to this. There's hundreds and hundreds of people that I know that Emil has helped around the racetrack. And I'm not, and like I said, I'm not talking about tax write-offs. I'm talking about right out of pocket charity or gifts or just something this man is known to many many people for being extremely generous maybe even to a fault he's that generous and that is the, to me that is true charity tax write-off charity that's a different that is nice but it's not the same thing when you actually give in something that you don't you're not having it you're just giving it because you want to that's the type of man Emil is you know they like the definition of a a champion is supposed to be somebody that surpass rivals in a competition like a sporting event. And I would tell you, Emil to me is the definition of a champion because his determination, the struggles that he went through, and the struggles that he, you know, he Emil essentially went back to being an exercise writer when he came to Canada. He had to start from scratch. Like I say, you go look at Look at all of us that went up there and did well. And look at the first two, three years. All of us, with the exception of Emil, we, we, you know, we had a little struggle, but we were winning. Look at Emil's record and you see this man really, really had it hard. Like, there's none of us that can compare to the struggle that he went through. And yeah. to me, that is why I always have a lot of respect for Emil. Mm -hmm. So enough said. I'm going to sit back and watch the rest of the show but, and but, but be before you go chris man thank you for those those kind words um uh, but 
don't leave yet. At least say it to him, let him come on board and you can talk to him for a minute or two. Warm, warm inside is all that matter. You know, yeah. that's all that matter. <laughs> oh man. You know, I was talking to somebody today and somebody was, they were telling me about um, technology now in, two, in 2022 and, and how, who would have thought that, you know, we would have been on to this kind of technology at all. Somebody from Barbados was saying, you know, it was like 20 years ago, they were just underneath the turbine tree, just playing draft. <laughs> All of a sudden, now they're in a house watching a computer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and, and you can, it's very mobile. Everybody got a computer right in your hand on your phone, right? <laughs> so, Chris. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know, do I don't know if it's good to go. Uh, do you have any Emil Ramsami moments you want to share? Uh, no, I just wanted to talk to him. I, I just wanted to talk about, you know, him as a as a person, like, because you know, I know I know Emil for a long time, and I I I I know he's not the type of person that gonna mention a lot of the things that he's done for other people. And I really wanted to talk about the, you know, the how charitable he is, and specifically about, like I said, out of pocket charity, where you actually giving somebody something just out of the goodness of your heart not mm -hmm. i'm not talking you know a lot of the guys like i said a lot of the guys when you make a certain amount of money your accountant would always tell you well look you could either give this to charity or you can the government gonna take it so like i said which is fine but mm -hmm. to me that's not true charity true charity mm -hmm. is that you see an exercise writer that <laughs> needs some boots or they're struggling or somebody needs a helmet or a, or you know like just and you know too, Sean, even like, you know, the Raptors, it's like, Emil is just a guy that was yeah. always giving, always I, giving. And I don't want to, I don't want to tell other people's stories, but I know I've had countless people tell me about all the things that Emil did, did for them. And a lot of people don't know that. People just see, you know, as a jockey and, you know, the, Emil, the writing highlights will speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you could Google Emil Rams, I mean, you can see everything he did, but. I just want to talk about the things that you won't find on, you know, and, and for me personally, like the way he inspired me to like, just that determination to keep going mm -hmm. because I don't, they're very, very I, 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 honestly, somebody would have to, I would have to see somebody do what Emil do before mm -hmm. I believe that he could do it coming from the position he was in, from being a champion in the islands and going to Canada and then essentially having to be a, an exercise writer. I mean, there was years where Emil was barely writing. And I don't think very many of us would have had the mental strength to keep going the way he did. And for me, when I was struggling, when I was a girl, that was, that was something that used to keep me going because I was just a bug boy just learning. And I always figured out well, if he could keep going with the level of, in my opinion, with the level of disrespect he was receiving, mm -hmm. if he can keep going, then I had to keep going too. I mean, he's going to tell a story, but I mean, I can, I, I feel like I want to ask you so much, but I feel that you want him to tell a story too, right? Yeah, I know. I want, I had, I had my turn already. I just wanted like, you know, like, when, like I said, when I was on the show, I started talking about, you know, some other writers and I talking about, I started talking about Emil and we got <laughs> some track. And we started talking about some other stuff, and we didn't have, we didn't end up coming back to it. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that out there, so you know, like I said, so people know the man behind the jockey because you know people see jockeys. But I I, I think he can hear us right now, so I'm gonna ask him if he can hear us. If he think he's good to go, just give me a thumbs up and and uh, let me know so we can get him get him in. Just a thumbs up. I feel his lips are moving. Maybe he's not talking to me. Or us. Okay. He looks like he's giving some direction at home. Like a, str a, a true man in the house. <laughs> <laughs> he's in charge there. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the when I had done the show before, I, I had um I had a little bit of issues getting on to, but I think it had something to do with the, the browser or something. Mm. Oh. I, had, I had to end up using Chrome. I was trying to use um the Safari and Apple and I had to end up using Chrome because it wouldn't work with the other. Um... Well, I think with 
what I'm finding out is uh, the more and more you use these these um, things, uh, you get pretty comfortable. So after a while, you know, you, you don't have to. It's like second nature. So. Mm -hmm. You gotta remember to em uh, you gotta remember to Emil no spring chicken, you know, these old people with technology. <laughs> you know, these old people are technologically challenged too, right? <laughs> well, I didn't wanna put him out like that, but Chris I think you got a, a, a spot in, in uh, on TV or something. <laughs> a comedian kind of <laughs> I, I I I say it man, he he, he far from me. I, I along with him and you can't <laughs> He can't come up and he can't come up on stage and slap me like Hope Will Smith slap Chris Rock, you know. And then you just ask if you could hear him. Try try and see if you could hear him. Well, just ask. Uh, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna add him to the stream right now, and yeah. you just gotta fix fix the um the screen, uh, Emil. Listen, <laughs> 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 that was funny. That was funny. John told me that if that phone didn't dead. That man would have gone till about two o'clock. He'd still be talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, listen. Nobody can talk like Pat. Nobody can talk about Pat. <laughs> 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 oh man, that's all anyway, good. Anyway, listen. I I'm gonna buzz out, and I will come back and see how the show go. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all good. We'll we'll talk about some other stuff. Meanwhile, we uh, we we'll add. Emil again and see if he's ready to go. Thanks a lot, Chris, and thanks for, for the kind words. All right. Keep it going. All right. So we'll add him and see how it goes. All right. Are you ready Hello. to go? Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, finally. Yeah. Oh, right, oh. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> let's roll. Let's roll. All good. All good. Yeah, let's get the show on the road. Welcome to yes, the show, buddy. my brother. You know, I'm always on the lead, but it's like I'm trying a different coming from behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I didn't realize you were so aware of that. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to see you too. Yeah, here, man. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't get to formally um, uh, yeah. introduce ourselves because you know the, the, the whole audio situation. Yeah, but I mean, better late than, than never, you know. Better late than never. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So. I'm going to let Sean Hall do his thing first because, you know, you guys go way back. Emmy Ramsami, you have been one of our greats for so many years. You started your career as everybody loved you. I remember back in the day, you and Von Charles, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, Charles. I remember back when, you, when I first saw you and, and, and Ricky Griffith. Yes. And your English jumpers <laughs> stand up. <laughs> but what I want to know from you, what the show is about, your journey. We know we got you, your connection in Guyana. You got hey. you know, to Trinidad. I want to hear how you started getting into the horse racing industry from your days in Guyana to Trinidad, my brother. Hit me. You know, well, my my racing career or my life as as a jockey is what you you know when you hear people talk of a fairy tale story is a true fairy tale story. Mm -hmm. I was never involved in horse racing at all. The only thing I know about horse racing is you know they run races to win, and and the only definition I know of a jockey is a definition of a jockey, somebody who rides for hire, and <laughs> and so you know my parents are Guyanese, but I was born in Trinidad. Uh -huh. And at a young age, I we went back to Guyana. So I grew up in Guyana. Okay. And in school in Guyana. And, and then in 78, the family moved back to Trinidad. And so in the process of going to, that was November 70, 78. So I went to the Ministry of Education to find people get me to school because I was a bright, very bright kid at school. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mind at, at Fourteen, I was right to do O levels, and like we know O levels, what O levels in the in mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and um, so I didn't mind taking a year off and going back to class in a new, in a new country, so to speak. You know, learning mm -hmm. their, their culture and, and their yeah. education system. Right, right. So I went to the Ministry of Education, and then on the way from the Ministry of Education, my mom asked us to ask me to pass by and see my godfather. Now my godfather's name Emil Kuri. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't know, Sean, you may not know, but he had owned and trained his own horses. Hence the reason I, my name is Emil. <laughs> but Emil is my middle name and, and my yeah. first name is Patrick. And okay. um, so we, I went by him and saw and saw him and, you know, he, he hadn't seen me since I was a little kid when I left him that way back. Excuse me a second. So yes. how you starting? How you starting using Emil instead of Patrick? I, I well, want to hear I, that. It's gonna come about, yeah. Um, so anyhow, so I met my godfather, and then all of a sudden he pick up the phone and start, you know, he you know he asked me being a jockey. He said, you know, good size, and I said, sure, why not? I, but the only thing I know about a jockey, Sean, and Derek is that a jockey, somebody rides for for hired out of that. So he picks up the phone, he start calling around, and then. At the at the time, I think it was 1978. To become a jockey in Trinidad and Tobago, you had to go through a government run ride in school. And then somebody, I think he called Edmund the Freitas first of all, and then Edmund told him so. And so then he called the racing authority, found out. As a matter of fact, they were taking applications. So I guess we had lunch after, after, and then after lunch, when we left, he sent me. I went by the minutes by the racing authority. And said, as a matter of fact, they were taking an application. So I got an application form and I filled it out. And, and they called me back before the Ministry of Education ever did. Okay. And that's how I became a jockey. And in the meanwhile, all, you know, I started buying books, trying to read and find out more of a jockey. But I never ever been to a horse. I never been to the Savannah watch the racing. Or all I did was watch what I could see on the TV. I think every Sunday you should replace. Yeah. And that was it. But, I read somewhere that somebody said that you never was interested in, in, in horse racing until you went to Guyana. And after that, then, you know, that's where it all, you know, happened. Is that true? I don't, that's, I, that, I'm here not for the very first time because I, yeah. I was always in Guyana, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. As from a little kid from two years old to 16. Mm -hmm. When I left Guyana, came back to Trinidad. And the only time I get interested in horse racing is, like I said, I went to the Ministry of Education, saw my godfather after, and he started asking about being a jockey, called the racing authority, and then I went by, and that was it. And then so the, so the racing authority called, I went and did a, their application. We had little, a little test to do, which I did, boom, boom, and in a blink. <laughs> they called us back and said, you're, you're, you're accepted in the riding school, and... April the 17th, I think it was. And then April the 19th, 1980, 79th, sorry, I went to the riding school. And when I went to the riding school on that day, it was the very first day in my life I ever saw a jockey or a rider on a horse, on a thoroughbred race horse for the saddle. <laughs> and it was amazing to me. It, you know, it was, it was really amazing for me. So you know, I'm all astonished. And, you know, now everybody has a went. It was three of us went together, and all these guys had, you know, um, been in the races and been around with. So I, I was, I was amazed, and you know, I, I was astonished. It was it looked great, and as the first time I, like I said, I ever saw a thoroughbred racehorse with a saddle and a rider on it. So we're we're interested here that I mean, like most people, like when I go to work, people scared of geese. A horse is much bigger than a goose. Sorry, <laughs> can you explain how how you got on top of a horse? <laughs> no, so I was so excited. I mean, I couldn't wait to get in a horse. You know, I couldn't wait so for the tutors to, and it I, and I really think what helped me along in my profession, and and did as good as I did, because I had no knowledge of the sport. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. So what the tutors taught me. That's what I what I knew. So I had no bad habits. Unlike say like mm -hmm. Sean, like you, you've been around the track, you've seen people riders ride in. So then you say, even though you're being taught, you think about, oh, I seen this guy did this. So I had none of that. I never been around it. I never been to the races. I never been on a horse with a saddle. So what the tutors told me, to, um, Tommy Carter and and Shafiq Mohammed, is what I did. Mm -hmm. So I had no bad habits. I did. So mm -hmm. I thought. I, I will be able to say I learned it correctly. I had nothing. Uh, they showed me what to do and how to do it. That's what I did. And I think that's that was the main part of my success. So is it safe to say that you were natural? Because you're, I mean, within, by 1980, you were a rock star already. You know, it, it was, 
It was exactly one year. Yeah. I was riding my first race. On the, uh, April the 19th, 1980, I was riding my first race. I mean, and the first day I got on the, on the horse and we went around, they, they make you jog and, and pop to the side, like we said. Mm-hmm. So then we come back and everybody, I'm waiting to hear the comments, you know, I'm kind of walking around, mocking stalls and waiting to hear the comments. And then they said, oh, that Ram Sami kid, he looked of the three guys, because three new guys came in every time. So yeah. the three guys, he, he looks the best. He sat that or that. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm all fucked up, you know, and <laughs> feeling good about it. That, and, that's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, first and besides time. that, too, the first time I ever breezed a horse. So in the riding school, you go through stages. We had different, we had 12 horses in the riding school area. And every, and like Sean, you would know, and horse people know every horse is, is a different athlete. So they kind of hold yeah. a bit and travel different. So they would alternate on different horses, stronger, different, weaker. Mm-hmm. So that, so that you learn to ride on, on the proper way. So, mm-hmm. and, and after they think you did so well, you're very rich a stage where they think you can breeze. Mm-hmm. You, you reach a stage where you get to breeze. So you put, they put three of us together. And this, we got about quarter past five in the morning. The track is dark. Mm-hmm. And this, is, this is on the turf track where we breeze usually. Yeah. And um, and my first breeze ever. But you remember we were young and we and we want so you, even though you breathe, even though you learn to push the one see you push. Yes. I we all want to win. So I, I think <laughs> I was on the best horse. And I as we left three shades of a mile, as we left the three it's full breeze on my horse. And I'm winning. So I'm just driving. I I remember distinctly well that my I my saddle slipped and I could feel it rolling, but I, I just didn't worry about it. I just wanted to win. So I just kept <laughs> winning. And then I went right over the horse's neck. And, you know, it's, it's the first and the only time, I, you know, when you say you hear, you hit and you see stars. <laughs> That's, I think, is the only time I ever see stars blinking like crazy. And then yeah. I broke my left collarbone. Whoa. And I, was, I had six weeks off and then I came back and continued. Well, well yeah, you're right. School was in Union Park, right? Yes, Union Park in Marabella. Yeah. Yes. yes. There you yes. go. I I answer your days. question, viewer. Those days. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, what I'm seeing right now that you got so much fans. You got lots of fans, uh, people who love you for all different types of reason. And and before we got the show started, Chris has so many good things to say about you. And when he was on the show, he himself was about to tell us all these nice things um about you but um obviously you know we had time uh constraint here so uh, no, I, I you know. him so well. thank you huh? thank you so much christopher <laughs> yes i uh, know chris i mean there's so many other people that say so many good things about you uh as you wander around the city um uh, if anyone ever go to the racetrack you might hear some some nice words sometimes <laughs> but um i just want to say um I want to talk about Emil Ram Sami, and I want to talk about your experience of the Caribbean man, uh, riding in Trinidad, riding in Barbados, and that's the only two I know about. I don't know if you rode. Did you ever ride in Jamaica? I rode um, the Red Stripe race. I, I think I've been there twice: once in a, a jockey championship and once for the Red Stripe. Mm-hmm. So I did. I did rode there. I didn't. And then never won a race, but I, I rode. Uh, and wh- what are the tracks? Like compare to uh, well, not to Canada yet, but let's talk about the Caribbean for, for now. Mm-hmm. Compare Trinidad mm-hmm. track to Savannah to uh, Barbados track. Well, you know, back in the 80s in, in Trinidad, we had three tracks, so it was kind of nice, kind of moving, moving ground, so to speak, and tack, taking on the different tracks. So it, w- it was. I really enjoyed doing. I really enjoyed that part of Trinidad racing. That you know, in, in the eighties when we had the two, the three tracks. You know, we'd have a summer meeting here, and then we have a Calypso meeting and a spring meeting, so to speak, and then the the winter Christmas meet. So, and we all look forward to different meets and likewise trainers and and Barbados. I mean, we these guys still have a garrison which still still like this, but you know, in the eighties we had a a Owners, we had quality horses. Com- I would say compared to now, we had much, much more quality horses. Mm-hmm. 
and the racing was, was was great. The racing was super. I mean, I I enjoy racing in the Caribbean in general between Barbados and Trinidad. I really enjoyed it, and I guess I would say Barbados was a. I really did enjoy Barbados because during the Calypso, the carnival time, you race in, in Barbados, and you know, and there's no racing in Trinidad because of the carnival. So I would spend that six weeks in in in, in Barbados and where I had good fun and made a lot of fans and had a great time. <laughs> what I want to ask you about, especially your, you know, I mean, everybody as a jockey have ups and downs in racing, but somebody brought to my attention, you won the Derby on a horse called Sky, what's her Sky name? Rocket. Sky, Sky Rocket. Rocket. Yeah. You won the Triple Crown with her and then you were taken down one time for some, one of the English writers, and you were very upset about it. Talk about that. Well, I mean, Sean, you're you're a writer, and you know you went over, especially in um, in islands. Comparing you, you also wrote a little bit out, and you had some experience out in North America, where it's different. You know, in 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 the islands in the eighties. I mean, you, you can ride a horse today and win with it. And you weren't sure to write about tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And and but I thought that used to only happen to guys like me, not you though. Yeah, yeah I know that. <laughs> I didn't think you off to put me up. So <laughs> 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 that's why oh, I to hear the story because yeah. I, I don't think Emmy Ransami had to go through those types of stuff. Yeah. You know. Mr. Joe Hadi once told me, you know, I think the best trainer owner I ever wrote for in my career until now. You know, the guy we had a great relationship, and he was so, you know, he was so genuinely good to me. You know, I get an horse in the morning and never ever tell me to ride how to ride a horse. Mm -hmm. Just let me up and wish me good luck. I think mm -hmm. it, over the years, of all the horse I wrote for for Joe. I can only recall one horse. We keep, I, we, I keep trying different things. And then he said, you know, maybe we should try something different. A horse <laughs> called Flash Point. He said, let's just drag her out to the race and, and see, you know. And, and it worked. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, that never, ever told me to ride his horse. And then I remember one time, Mr. Roland Tan, who I won the um, goes the yes, cup for the Yes. Yeah. Um, he had a bunch of horses. And I was... Getting spending all the time getting them every day and getting them ready for their first race in Trinidad. And when entries time came up, and Joe called me and said, um, oh, Mr. Khan wants to use Brian Harding. I was so ticked off. <laughs> and I, I didn't get on the horses. <laughs> and then he came in and he said, you know, I want you to get me that. He said, and that's what he said. And, I, and uh, until this day, I, I keep referring it, telling young guys, you know, Mm -hmm. When the I said, he said, Emil is the owner's prerogative. He's paying the bills every day. And mm -hmm. if he wants to write A, B, or C, it's his prerogative to write who he wants to write. Mm -hmm. And that stick on me until it's now. And like, just like I'm saying this to you, mm -hmm. I say to writers every year, to quite a bit of guys every year. Mm -hmm. And they're paying the bill and it's their prerogative to write who he want, wants right. to write. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then one day, I, I beat that call to Congress horse in a, at Christmas meeting in President's Trophy with Jerovian. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, Joe called me and said, Mr. Khan would like you to ride Call to Kong in the World Cup. And that was it. And then me and Mr. Khan became so close. Uh -huh. he, he, he was like my dad. I could call him Mr. Khan any, any day from mm -hmm. any part of the world and said, I want so, so, and so. Mm -hmm. And he was said, And it was no problem. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to ask you uh, something in, in, when it comes to um, you becoming a jockey. I want to go back just a little bit. Yeah. And you said you had to go to training school. That's how you become became a jockey, right? Yeah. Now, I know there's a bunch of guys in Barbados uh, who just picked up writing. Uh, Sean can tell you. Uh, the list goes on who just hang around and just jump on a horseback, uh, yeah. walk, walk horses to the beach and learn how to ride during that time. I think that, that's a, yeah, I think that's a quite normal way mm -hmm. jockeys around the world. I think in North America is very much the same way too. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no school 
So but yours was in. unique. You went to training school for this. Yeah, we had a, you know, at the, in the 80s, I think the school was open in 78, if I'm correct. And to become a jockey in Trinidad and Tobago, you had to go through the riding school. There's no yeah, other way. Yeah, yeah correct. There's no other way you could become a jockey. Mm. Until it was closed, and then they had a, it was open a couple more times, and had the same procedure, but I didn't know how, how it went along. And then, you know, like, and I've been in North America for about just over 30 years. And a rider in North America, whether Canada or United States, I would say it's only recently they have a couple coming through a couple of schools, but they usually come around the racetrack, they walk horses, they get, you get around, then somebody says, oh, you know, you, you look small enough, maybe you can be a rider, and then, and that's how it happens. <laughs> you know, like, right. like, like I heard Chris saying, and thanks again, Chris, with confidence, like, I've been doing this show, you know, for just over 40 years, mm-hmm. and I've only put on, like, sitting here right now, I would say 16 pounds, but prior to in my day, like, six years ago, when I, business was much better, I put on 10 pounds, in 40 years. So that's, you know, so like you said, he's not kidding you, I tell you, so I'm dedicated, like, I mean, I'm 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 obsessed with the sport. Mm-hmm. How, how do you do that? Thing. Because this is what I like doing. I really, it makes my day when I get up and go to the track in the morning and get no horse. Mm-hmm. So it, there's a lot of dedication. It's not just, and you know, I do it proper. I don't, you know, like in North America, there's a big thing where the riders are becomes bulimic and they're they heave. But like mm-hmm. I always said, if you ever see me heaving, call a doctor because I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But how how do you manage how do you manage your injuries? Because I know you've had a lot of injuries over the years. Yeah, you know, I the know. worst of all, yeah. And you I know, just want to know how do you manage it. You know, I would say a lot. Uh, you know, who has a lot of help? I would. Um, who does? Who does a lot to help me with it? Is Lisa, my wife. She really, okay. yeah, she really does so much more behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you wouldn't believe, you know, the kind of things. So all of a sudden, I have a broken bone. So she be load me up with calcium like crazy, <laughs> <laughs> and a whole bunch of different things. But you know, the the. Like you hear, you know, the older people said, you you have to give it time. You know, even though you try to force yourself to come back, you know, when you're young, you're, you're trying to push it to go through it. And then you, you, when you get older, you realize you see it, you really have to give yourself the time to heal. Mm-hmm. And, and like I always, and my, one of my main word phrases, you know, when, when you fit and well, you bounce well, you know. Mm-hmm. So I wrote for 19 years, Sean, without breaking a bone, you know. And had some spectacular falls every year. Yes. And then frequently one day in California, a horse just um coming home, just, just buck awkward. Uh-huh. And I broke a finger. And the mean horse would buck a thousand, thousands of times with you over that 20 yes. years or whatever period. And the horse yes. just buck and just kind of got my finger awkward. And I had seven rides that that day, the next yeah, later that day, so I went down all Malibu season specialists. I had a little gadget made. I was trying to ride a nice horse, a first time starter. I had for Bob Buffer because at the time I was leading right out there in, in California, mm-hmm. in the California circuit, I was, I was riding everything for Bob. And I was trying to, I wanted to ride that horse of Bob, the maiden. And I, I think I rode two races, I won a cheap race. And the next one, I, I no, I think I won both that I rode, mm-hmm. but I couldn't make it no more. It was it was bad, my hand. It would just blow up out of proportion. I couldn't bite the pain anymore. So and I gave it up. And the horse won, <laughs> won it impressively. Mm-hmm. And then he ended up turned out to be a nice calbred horse. Wow! Forget his name, Charlie something. And that's that's uh that's interesting because that's. That's how horse racing goes, you know. Uh, Patrick was saying last week that you know, horse come and and um and and jump up in in, in the um in the gate, and next thing you know, it's out of the race. And the same thing happened to you with your finger. How long yeah, did you yeah. ride in California for? I just rode for just a 
I left in seven in nine, sorry, in ninety eight and ninety nine. I you know when I went to California, it was like a dream come true. Mm-hmm. I went to California and the biggest circuit in North America and took off. Can't do nothing wrong. Um, right in there, and then the Hollywood. After the Santa Anita meeting start, actually the first way I rode in California, I went out to Golden Gate and rode a horse and 150,000 grass race and won it. So and then that was a, that was the kickoff. Wow! Wow! Christopher wow. Time, I think it was Christopher Street. Yeah, it was the horse of the Philly. How much stake races you on out there? I. You know, I'm sure, like like you said, you know, in my house, I don't have any racing picture. Only there's a couple hand up in the house there in Lisa's office. Is that a knock on Chris? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was telling, I was telling Sean. No, but you go through most jockeys' houses, you walk in, you only see horses all over. There ain't yeah. no horse picture in my house. And, and likewise, you know, those... Um, I was riding a lot of my horses. I was riding. But how how did you get to do that? How how did you manage to to just take off in California, just coming from Canada? Is it, it because off, of you know? no? Because you were champion twice in Canada. Is it because of that? Was that Canadian? Yeah, I champion? think it, it would have helped somewhat, definitely. You know, and then I I was I was light too, and yes. And Sean, like you know, you know, when you go and you start off, you start off on the right on the right foot. Yes. Things just keep going, you know. Mm-hmm. And then the biggest nightmare, like um, Derek, like you said, Patrick was saying. So I rode. I was in the Hollywood Spring Meeting. I was twenty-one in front. Can't do nothing right. wrong. Everything I write, it was just even the press went crazy. They couldn't. I mean, it, it was it was berserk. Even the fans, like Sean, would know. The fans in um, a woodbine here. I mean, they all. And then I came back. I came to Canada to ride a, a horse, a Stronic a Euchre. Mm-hmm. For Stronic in the plate. Yes. I finished third. Yes. And then the race after that, I fell and broke my right collarbone. Yes. Well, a horse pick up the lead like he's going to win and just snap a leg. And, and um. Yeah, and I broke my right collarbone, and I went back. Lost six weeks, couldn't get going again. Went back to California and couldn't get going again. That's the reason. I, and that's how Victor Espinosa came on the scene. He okay. took all. He took all my business. Yeah. Oh, okay. I heard that about somebody else last week too. Somebody said the same thing. When somebody got hurt, and then somebody came on. But we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what, what does that do to you, though? How, how, how does that, I mean, does that totally gut you? I mean, well, you after know, doing so but, well? Well, you, you, can't let it, you can't let it bother you, know? You just have to turn the next page, like we say, you know? You turn the next page and go on because, you know, if you if you think about it, you can just, you can, you can be able to turn the page, you can close the book. <laughs> no, because I'm glad, we, I'm, I'm glad we're into this because yeah. I have a good... Emmy Ransom story. I remember when you came back and Patrick was Patrick was the man back yeah, then. Yeah. Patrick was the man. I remember I had a few nice horses. So you guys used to come wrong all the time. And I remember one day you got kind of you got kind of angry, you know what I mean? You said, Hon, everything Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. I can't get it right in here. Everything Patrick, you know what I mean? And I said, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. And after you, we had a horse they called Musical Musical Treat, a chestnut yeah. filly. I don't know if you remember her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember? Yeah. Musical Treat, and you came by. You said, "See that horse there? Patrick ride that horse bad every time. <laughs> he, he rides that horse bad all the time. You need to ride Let like an run. English horse. You told me you need <laughs> to ride like an English horse and put her in behind horses. A producer late." Right, he said, Patrick, have her too much on the pace. And I said, But well, I had power back then to say, Well, Mr. Ramsami, if you feel that way, I, I would give the call. <laughs> Husband's <is> down, <laughs> and everything you said, I never forget that. Everything you said, you rode this horse twice, 
yeah. cover yeah. up yeah. and producer lit barber. You know what I mean? That's that's many yeah, yeah. The barber with <laughs> killing that kick it. Yep. I was, yeah, you want two races back back with her. And I yeah, remember yeah, nice races coming back. Yeah. Real nice allowance races. And I remember um it was all because of you know you, you were now trying to get back some business in yeah. you know, a woodbine. But it was always tough, man, because every time you should to get going something seemed to happen. But I remember, always remember that. I always remember that horse, man, of you. Yeah, Tell no, me. no. That worked. Because, yeah, I remember this thing you well, to say that, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the show gets really interactive. And someone was asking you, Emil, uh, I don't know if he's a female or male. And I hope Lisa don't get mad if it's, if it's a female. But they're asking, how is your back? You know, that, that's been a bad rumor that's been going. I never ever in my lifetime have problems with my back. My back is always behind me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a yeah. that is a bad somebody spread a bad rumor. And I think I have a good idea who it is. Oh dear. Okay. John. Oh dear. <laughs> John. Oh dear. Anyhow. But my back has does never ever had problems with it. I mean like I I would my routine when I and a, and a year when the racing start is only this year for the first time. This is almost this is April, mm -hmm. and I haven't reached. I I do a thousand sit ups a day, it's Sean. Yes. So yes. right now I'm, I'm about three hundred and fifty. All right. No, yeah. It, so it, so it, I'm it, getting it, back. It, and it, I, it, I, I was just saying just recently I was just saying to somebody. The reason why I don't ever in my whole life ever had no problems with back, so long as your core is strong, yes, you will back. You have no problems at all with your back. I always heard you say that, and I always we always knew that you were yeah. one of the fittest guys in the room with your workout yeah. regime is legendary. You know, Chris legendary. was saying that over and over and over um, to no, us. No, well, so. I enjoy it. Like, look, I get up in the morning, so I'm pretty good to track in the morning, mm -hmm. and I like I start back in last. Three or four weeks, and I do yeah. 350 in the morning before I leave here at four o'clock in the morning, you know. Yes, yes, and not just and not just the easy up to now, you know. The the, the hardest one is the scissors, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the I proper, think, if, I do, if I don't do it proper, I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I oh. think we want to go back to 1987 when you win the, the uh gold cup in Barbados, yes. Uh, just hang tight, we're just gonna go right back. is on the way and the first horse to show in front is Green Man. It's Green Man, Ben Tom on the inside, Navarro Secundo is on the outside and they come toward past the mile pole with a mile pole with a mile to run and they're going at the most tremendous gallop down the chute the first time and the leader on the inside is Navarro Se is uh, Green Man. Then comes Ben Tom, Paddy Bird is right there, Navarro Secundo, Lashanda's Devil on the inside, Ubique is there, Mail is right there. Uh, on the outside is Lashanda's Devil. Dinner Favor was the other one. Ben Ikes is the last one. Round the top turn they go. And Ben Tom has the lead on the inside now, along with Green Man. Paddy Bird is right there. Then comes Navarro Secundo and Ubik. Call to account is the next one through. Then comes Mail struggling a little bit. Ubik then a good way back to Sandgrave Park and the two Jamaicans. They go down now towards the four furlong marker. And the leader on the inside, Paddy Bird. Paddy Bird is the leader now as they go uphill and she's gone well clear. It's Paddy Bird now as the leader from Green Man. Then Ben Tom is right there making some ground on the outside. It's Sky Rocket. So too is, is Navarro Secundo at the top of the hill. And the leader is now Paddy Bird from Ubique. Ben Tom is right there but he's struggling. They're coming back to the quarter mark and the leader is Paddy Bird. Ubique is right there. Then Ben Tom. Then I can see making ground on the outside is Sandgrave Park. But well, they're coming back to the Savannah Court. And it is Paddy Bird, the Creole, with Ubique on the outside. Then Sandgrave Park is the next one through. Ben Tom is beaten. So to his call to account, they're inside the final furlong. And it is Paddy Bird and Ubique. Ben Tom on the outside and Sandgrave Park. But Ubique is going to take it, I think. Ubique and Sandgrave Park. And here comes Sandgrave Park to win it. Sandgrave Park wins it now from Ubique and Ben Tom. Paddy Bird is fourth, then comes Skyrocket, then I call to account Green Man. The next one through is Navarro Secundo. 
Wow. <laughs> that must have brought back some memories. <laughs> John, um, John and Derek, after that race, that, I, I, was, I was a Barbadian citizen after that race. <laughs> <laughs> and is that the beginning of the name Barbara? <laughs> no. I I wanna I wanna believe because I like 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 the Bajan said, I just shave him on the on the on the money. <laughs> so the barber is a Bajan nickname that we, we give to you as Barbadians? Yes, that's because you know, like I said, during the during the the, the Calypso time and like you say there's no race in Trinidad and I spent that six weeks in Barbados and Hence the reason, and then I was always I, I did quite well. Like Sean, you know, I did quite well. Yes. There's yes. a lot of races I was just coming from way out and just on the money. So there's a shave, yes. like like the Bajan said, just shave them on the line. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and especially after that particular race, where I got my Barbadian citizenship. Okay. <laughs> I just where I just shaved the Trinidadian horse. <laughs> I want to ask you out of it, out of those three gold cups that you won, which one was the one that you mostly enjoyed? Obviously, I would say obviously the first one was was you know at and in those years in those early gold cups, is, you can't compare to now gold cups. So Sean, you be seeing no, gold cups no, right? no, even in your no, time, no. even the gold cup you won is good. But yeah. then uh, in recent years, I mean, went down in eighties well, back then when it. The goal with the gold cup. You ask every Barbadian what you're doing on Saturday. Everybody going to the garrison. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody. Yeah. You couldn't. It was. You couldn't even see grass. You didn't even know there was a grass field there. <laughs> there were so many so people. Is it, is it safe to say then, like for myself, is it one of the best feelings of winning a race that you can have? The Barbados Gold Cup. Back in those without days. doubt, definitely without doubt. And what brings what makes it so special? Is it because of the atmosphere? Because it's a wonderful atmosphere. Yeah, I think I think that that's about that the tip it off. The atmosphere is so I mean it's so um, electrifying. That's the right word for it. Yeah, and you know going into that going into that gold cup, you know, like and even still now you could see. I mean, the kind of horses and owners and the people that come to it, mm -hmm. even you know makes it mm -hmm. so much more nice yeah beautiful yeah, <laughs> so and wait can i can i ask you this question then could you've won two queen's plates two queen's plates three gold cups the feeling of gold cups is better than the feeling of a queen's plate i would say definitely really <laughs> the atmosphere you you can't compare it at least those gold cups in the 80s were Electrifying, I, like you said, Sean. Yes, yeah. yes. So, I mean, you, you, you got like thousands of Bajans right now who are like jumping up and say, You see what you tell winner? But I mean, <laughs> but, but maybe they can add some money to the purse then, maybe <laughs> some more money actually, and make it even more electrifying. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what I admit though, Barbadian, Barbadian have so much passion for, for racing, yeah, yeah. And, they, and they throw that passion into those big races, it, it's become a real, I don't know, man. Yeah. It's and now, and now in, in recent years, it's become so much international now. Let, look for the, like the Gold Cup race. I mean, all the top owners from worldwide want to be part of it, you know? Yes, yes, correct. I mean, because Ramsey, was, he came to Barbados and he won a few times. I think he really liked what he yeah, felt. Yeah, the, the whole atmosphere, yeah. It's not just, yeah. yeah. It's the no, whole... I, Go ahead. I know... Eric. I know there was a like someone posted something saying back then it was Barbados versus Trinidad versus Jamaica, Martinique. Yeah, and I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. was that the part of it that made the atmosphere even even better? Like just having the different islands compete? Well, it, it definitely did it did add to, to the atmosphere without a doubt, yeah. It because you know, when you get to the garrison in the mornings prior to the to the Gold Cup, the week prior to the Gold Cup or two weeks prior to the Gold Cup, everybody's is arguing, debating whether it's Trinidad or Jamaica. Well, Jamaica was really never in it. Was no, going to no. be in Trinidad? You know, whether it's going to be Venice Richards or Patrick Osborne or Ram Sami or Rajkumar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. You just say that you mentioned those guys' name because 
every time I think of Emil Ramsamy, I can't help but think of Venice Richards. You know, it's just it doesn't like when I think of Sean Hall, I think of Ricky Griffith. It's it's like just yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> It's like um, it's like um, um, Jordan and Pepin. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. A one-two punch. Yeah. No man, no. But back in the day, I mean, it was always a pleasure writing against him. You know what I mean? And you always had your followings, and it was. I think the rivalry too with jockeys back then. That it was so much that. All you guys who rode in Barbados and Trinidad, you know, you took your trade to, to Canada. With yeah. great you know, something we did to um, ride myself in a uh, riding in, in, in between Barbados and Trinidad, and guys would, would come by and said, you know, the, you know how, how rough we ride in, in, in the islands in Barbados yeah. and Trinidad. Yeah. And one thing I never did in my whole race in, in Barbers and Trinidad is I never, sh I, you very sel he seldom hear me scream, mm -hmm. you know, get out my way, whatever. And then if you cut me off or whatever, you come back and you guys, so I always, my my policy is I ain't gonna say boo to you, so I can have you more puzzled. Than you, <laughs> then like, I almost drop this guy and kill him. And this guy says shit all to me. So now I have you more worried when you ride in the next race. What I'm gonna do to you <laughs> because you know what you almost did to me in the race before, and I didn't say go. I just, but you know, if we all compete, you know, um, Derek, in this game is such a brutal sport. Mm -hmm. You know, we're best of friends mm -hmm. our whole life, and we're going along, and then for that two minutes when you're in the gate and the gate open, we're literally trying to kill each other. <laughs> that's that's interesting you say that because it's I've heard sport, stories. Yeah. I've heard stories, Emil, of, of jockeys physically fighting at the Garrison Savannah. I don't know how true it is, but I've heard. Has that ever happened to you? Well, I know I can get in the fighting or run. I don't want to fight. Nobody. <laughs> 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 I do fight. I remember when I first came to Canada. I, this this was very I know first the first spring meet. I think it was. This was a Greenwood Sean. So it, you know how yeah. long that was. Yeah, yeah. I, I I was getting on all the horses on my right. I was, and so then two two horses came together in a maiden race. Black Rockers and forget the other horses name that I rode. So it's myself and Jack Lausanne and even Mike decided the other horse was a better horse. <clears throat> and so Jack rode it. And then I I got up and nailed him. I shaved him out the wire, boom. And he reached over and he passed and, and he felt he, he felt a punch at me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know you that one. Oh yeah. I'm quite sure. Anyhow. I, I nailed him on the wire and then he reached over and he felt the punch, but I just moved away. I, heard, I mean, I, I've seen horses biting at other horses, but I didn't realize jockeys do the same thing too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's get angry and take off some in the heat of the moment. But that's the part of the sport that, you know, the top guys, we just we just bite, like you said, you know, we, we bite our lips and keep our cool. Mm -hmm. It was on like we saw at the Oscar there last night. Yes, yes. <laughs> But now, now we're talking about Canada a bit. My biggest, I always, always wanted to know because I think it, was, it had to be one of your biggest um, disappointments in Canada. Get a big forehead, John. Who, you or me? I get a big forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, I wish you would put that hat back on because you know, at, at your age and my age, and you still got so much hair. Look at my head. <laughs> you know, you see how thin I pull in it with my finger because it might fall off with a wig. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, man. Back, back in 1991, when you were, I remember you were. When I just came, race, yeah. And you lost yeah, the race on a horse called Deborah's yes, Victory. Yes, Vic, yes Steve Meyer, Deborah. yeah. Deborah's Victory, yeah. Victory. And I remember the press. I don't know if you remember it, but the press was really, really rotten oh, to you. Yeah. Really, 
I, I remember, it, it, I never seen it happen to a jockey before that the press actually wrote those type of stuff. How did you recover, come back from such a big, I mean, that, back then to me, that was one of the biggest things i seen from one of our guys that really, you know, it hurt me at the time. It really hurt me. Yeah, I mean, the race, the form yeah. really blew it out of proportion, you know? Yes. They yes. did knock me all over for losing the race by losing my whip, but yes, I mean, the, if you like you said, if you're looking for an excuse that there was an excuse, he lost his whip, he lost the race. It's simple, yes. right? So anyhow, but they I mean, they blew it out of proportion. But I mean, I I took it hard. I lost, I lost the outfit, and I lost a lot of business. And then I had to regroup. Like Sean, I had a. I stuck, Fort Erie, huh? I stuck out for a couple of months and I couldn't get going. I went to Fort Erie and I think I ended up finishing third and, you know, picked up and got going again. Mm -hmm. I think I wrote six or nine winners on Fort Erie, third behind Steve O'Brien and Dale Hemsley. Right. And then I came back to Woodbine the following year. Right. And that, in those days, we had seven days. We raced seven days. We raced Wednesday to Sunday in in Toronto, yes. and then Monday, Tuesday is for Erie. So right, right. I was going seven days a week, <laughs> you know. And all the racing we had in Canada prior to nineteen ninety six, I was the first rider in Canada to ride a thousand to ride a thousand races in a season. Wow! So I, I was pretty busy. Yeah. Whoa! At one track or is that different tracks? The first oh. rider in Canada. Yeah. To ride a thousand races in a season, but I mean, is, is that a one? Um, I I would think. That, I think it might have been that that was based at Woodbine. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, well, and a thousand races at Woodbine. Here's another um, a trivia I could give you too. You know, um, Northern Nansa won the Queen's Plate, right? And he's yeah. the only horse that won it from the one hole. And the only other person run from the one hole twice after that was Emil Ramsam. What? <laughs> so you, so which horse was that? Well, two, the two times I won the Queen's Plate two, 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 on the one hole. Victor, Victor, Victor Cooley, Cooley, yeah, and um, Eden World. Eden World, yeah. Well, well, we got we got video of you in the, I think it was the Shady Well Sticks back yeah, in yeah. 1991. Yes. I'm yes. just going to let it run and relive that moment all over again. Yeah, no, nice <laughs> moment. <laughs> They're at the post. They're off in the Shady Well Stakes, all the way in good order. Ephesus, now Deborah's victory comes on in between Phillies toward the inside, Morrison Bell and Seattle Moon. Now Deborah's victory takes the early lead. Seattle Moon next to the rail is second. Morrison Bell third. That's Maple Lake gaining ground from fourth. Ephesus is fifth. Then gold bracelet and I'm Bond two. Three furlongs to run and Deborah's victory has stretched her lead to six lengths as they approach the quarter pole. Maple Lake takes over second. Seattle Moon to the inside third. Morrison Bell fourth. Ephesus gold bracelet. And I'm Blonde too. It's Deborah's victory at the top of the stretch. Deborah's victory in front by three lengths. Maple Lake full out to catch her from second. And she's gaining ground on Deborah's victory now. Here comes Maple Lake as they come to the 16th pole. Deborah's victory staggering. And Maple Lake has taken the lead. Deborah's victory digging back in. Maple Lake, Deborah's victory coming back. Here's the wire. Maple Lake by a head in the Shady Well Stakes. Deborah's victory. Up that was a tough one, but uh and, and not only that, I remember I remember Emil taking off his, his cat peak and everything. You remember that Emil? Yeah, <laughs> my, yeah. I mean, you know when the man like he was drunk and he, he ripped off the cat yeah. peak and he stopped using the cat peak. I mean it was it was I don't know. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, I had to get it, man, but just to get out nose. I know Robbie King ended up winning the race, but he he saw when the whip 
mm. when the oh, first line, yes, you know, yes. so okay. that's gonna encourage him even more yes, to yes, get yes. Uh, into a bigger drive. Like I would have done too. Yeah, got into an even more of a bigger yes. team yourself, Chuck, because you roll. You know what the yes. competition is like. Yes, yes, yes. But, you know, like a jockey is uh, um, directly talking about. You know, it is the only sport where we all competing against each other and say the same dressing room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and we go and then we go and we try to kill each other and then we come back in the same room, mm-hmm. all friends again. But how, how, I, I mean, that's a unique uh, way to yeah. live, uh, work. But tell me how unique that is with doing it, come back to the dressing room and uh, smiling and laughing and joking. But when you get out there, that fierce competition. Tell me about that, man. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it, it's uncomparable to anything. You know, he, he said, we we're best of friends. And then for the two minutes, we get in the gate and the gate opens. We're trying to kill each other. We're enemies. Mm-hmm. Until after you pass the wire or, or less some infringement happening, it might carry on a little longer between a couple guys. But then after that, you, you're good friends again. You know, you, you okay. can't compare, you can't find nothing to compare to where, where we all compete in and then share in the same locker. Yeah. So it's but some sort of... You were of two-time sport. champion in the 90s. You were two-time champion in the 90s. Yeah, 90, 96 which or 97, yeah. you really... Yeah, which, which jockeys you really, um like, really enjoyed your rivalry? Um, you know what I mean? Especially at your height. You know, the, the competition, I think, in the 90s was, was, was so... Com- it was good competition, you know. It, it was very um, competitive. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the thing about it is um, it's not like... I, I enjoy winning. So it, it doesn't matter who, who, who comes to the plate. I'm going to try and hit mm-hmm. out the park. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so then I, want ask, I want to ask you about like I don't know about back in the days because you I saw that goal cut when you you just stood off the pace and then you just your horse started running stand with part yeah, like, yeah. like if you just got inside the race but mm-hmm. you are known to be out front like yeah. is that your like your style now is that what people expect you to do or is that no. what happens? You know, and I get branded like that here in Canada. But if you look back at all my rides and even in Trinidad, because I was always up, you know, right? But like I always say to young riders, you know, I tell them, you say, if I should train horses, get another topic, if I should train horses at all, my only instruction to a rider is don't get in a fight with my horse or with your horse. Please take a little hold with. Because remember, you train them when you train them, Mark Sean, you train them in the morning, you, you want them to go there in the morning and work five alongs in a minute. And then, and you, the trainers go out and you come back in and you come, you're working 104 or 103 and they say, what happened? And they're not happy. Mm-hmm. And now when the gate mm-hmm. opens they, in the afternoon, they want you to go 103, 104. <laughs> and then in the morning, they want you to go in a minute. <laughs> So, so the thing is, you know, a horse. I I think way too many races are lost by riders strangling the horses too much. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think if you let them run even, like the way, you know, you, you take a little hole, yes, but don't get in a fight with them. Because man, when you think about it, when you get in a fight with the horses, the horses lose energy as well as you also mm-hmm. lose energy. You get tired and he's getting there because mm-hmm. it's like driving a car with a foot on the brakes and a foot on the gas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So, so basically, just let, them roll, let them roll comfortably within Yeah, you, you, you take, you know, you like you throw them in in, 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 in Ford gear mm-hmm. and, and you have your hand on a handbrake. I, I like true. Just in case you need. <laughs> not, not <really. laughs> but I mean, I mean, you were you were the man to know with the cross, the killer cross, killer cross, yeah. killer cross. Where did that come from, man? You know, you, were doing you know, that yeah, that you know who inspired me to do that is, uh, and he still does it. He, he was my idol when coming to that, and that I picked it up and I brought it. 
I think I brought it to Canada, and it was I had I was my way in Trinidad too. But um, Ken Desermo, he Ken Desermo. From the time I see Ken Desermo, Sean, I should jump out. He was that was his. When you say Ken Desermo, is the first thing that comes to your mind. Always reaching yeah. until now. I see see him ride a few races when I happen to see him ride a televised race. That's right. He's that's yeah. the From the time you see this person switching, you know, it's like if if you would watch a race and. And you would know when you see me just reach in, and I would know if I see that, oh, that has to be Ken, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, my, my idols was was always um, Cadero, Angel Cadero, because mm-hmm. he was a guy who would lay down and keep reaching the horse, and know he gets a horse, and, and Lafitte Pinca, and when I went out there in, Cal- in Santa Anita, in California, he was, he was like my box mate, so to speak. So it was, okay. that was, like, something unique, you know? Yes, 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 yes. When when you get to be with your idols and that kind of stuff, like how do you do you let them know that you're my idol or you just play cool and like no, I just just you know Sean, you know me, I'm very quiet, but I just scrutinizing and seeing and just yeah, I'm just amazed and I'm kinda of knocked out watching these like 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 Pink Eye himself, you know, over the, he was just about I think fifty when I Towards just after prior to me, about ready to leave there. You, I think he was just stopping to stay there. And you know, it's funny how they're branding him an old man. And the guy, I mean, until now, I, I, when somebody rides a race, I, I see a, he is a guy that will lay on the rail and just go through. It wouldn't even take a hole. Like I don't see a guy. <laughs> I would just go, go, and when he gets, when it's getting tight and bad, then he starts screaming and cussing in, in Spanish, you know? <laughs> <laughs> cussing in Spanish sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's a big, very strong rider, though. So you, you won a lot of races yeah, in the Caribbean, yeah. and um, and then you came to Canada, and and then you, you had it, you, you was it a cakewalk or you had it rough in the beginning or or what was it like um, after transitioning from the Caribbean to Canada? You know, like 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 Chris like Chris said, you know, it, it was tough, but um it, it was extremely tough. But I handled it well because like you said, like Chris like Chris told the story, I, I came here as a champion, you know. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. they would call me almost every weekend. They would call me to, from Trinidad to come back. You know, look, you've been gone a whole year. You haven't won a winner. Why don't you come back here? Da, da, da. But I, you know, I was like the saying goes. I, you know, I was looking for greener pastures. But mm-hmm. the thing behind the story is Lisa, my now wife and present wife. <laughs> Lisa had came back to Canada. She, you know, Lisa's out Trinidad and she came was and then she left came back to Canada it was Lisa came back to Canada in nineteen ninety so I packed my tack and come forward in the horses too. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. So after that rough time in the beginning, I guess um Sean, go ahead, sorry before we get to this part. No, because I looking at Echo Base, you were the first body from the islands in all generation or era to be in Canada from 84. What were you doing up there in 84? Oh, you know, I, I came on a, a visit. I came on a vacation trip to see Lisa. Okay. And I just, I went in, I went, I went to Woodbine and just took my Trinidad license and I got issued a Canadian license and I rode one I rode a horse for JC Myers. Okay. And uh, and just that's the one race. I was here for Is that team. one race? Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw I that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I I just noticed something though. I just I just you know, you know, I'm very sharp at these sort of things. Yeah. So you seem to be following your wife all around the place <laughs> from 84 to 1990. <laughs> uh, I didn't want that. <laughs> So, so it's the same. Hang on, before before that, that, Sean, before, really Emil right. this question, <laughs> before Emil answer this question, before Emil answer this, right? Now, did she know this <laughs> that you were following her around? 
<laughs> you know, Sean, you know, like we want people to say, you know, when is a good horse, you, when you see a good horse, you stick with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, this leads me to this because earlier I asked you about, um, on the internet I saw somewhere they said that you, um, you, you only started writing when you went, when you went to Guyana. That was on the internet. And on the internet, it also says that that you 2019 or 2021 that you were a single man. So we can't believe anything that the internet tells us. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> the, only, the only thing I ever rode horse in only prior to getting into ride school in Trinidad, actually I, I forget to mention only I only sat on a horse once. Where I lived in, in Guyana, my my great grandfather had horses. So they were wild horses running out in the pasture. And I spent months trying to catch, get a horse to get a, I see the guy used to put a rope in their mouth and then climb on their back. So I'm trying to get, and this, this horse must have, must have ate probably about maybe 15, 20 pounds of sugar and corn for me trying to get. So that's all I get the horse to get close and see if I get a rope in her mouth. And I couldn't get a rope in her mouth. So I, one day, I finally get to get in her back. No rope in her mouth. So I she so allowed me to get in her back. So I got in her back. No rain, no nothing. Just me. I think I was 14. And I got in her back and now the herd is away and there's a stallion in the herd. So I'm there and she broke into she broke into a jug and I'm there hanging on to her mane. And as she got closer to the stallion, everybody picked up. I just bailed off. That's my only right. <laughs> and now, Sean, Sean, now knowing about horses, it was uh -huh. definitely a two-year-old. Imagine a wild, wild horse out in the wild, running wild, two-year-old, and I rode for about, I don't know, maybe about 100, 140 yards or so. We're just jiggy-jogging uh -huh. until you get to the herd and the stallion prick up his ears. I just, boom, and I bailed off. And that was it. That's my only writing experience. Probably going to writing school. Wow. Yeah. So after that rough start, um, and then I guess in 1996, when you won the Queen Split, uh, I guess all the rough and all the uh, hard work must have paid off. They're at the post. They're off in the Queen's Plate Stakes. Firm Dancer broke well from the extreme outside, as did Stefan Otis. Stefan Otis quickly comes on to take the early lead. The Mask of Day, Victor Cooley is down on the rail. Christie crunches alongside as they move in front of us for the first time. And it's Stefan Otis, the early leader for Mickey Walls. Christie crunches right there along with the Mask of Dave. North Face out of trouble on the outside in fourth position. Drafting in behind horses, Victor Cooley. Then we have Spider Wire, who's in behind horses as well. Handsome Hansel just to the outside of Spider Wire. Then Northern Prospector, Firm Dancer, has found the rail. Now back about eight lengths off the lead. Then Laurie's main man, Crown Attorney, intended passage, and trailing his chief, Bearheart, 15 lengths off the lead of Stefan Otis as they enter the backstretch. Christy Crunch is on the outside of Stefan Otis, just a neck off the lead. North Face rating kindly in third, just a length and three quarters off the leader. Victor Cooley, Ram Sammy's got him to the outside now, just three and a half lengths off the lead. Toward the rail, that's Northern Prospector, Spider Wire, six off the leader. Handsome Hansel's on the outside, Firm Dancer has eight lengths to make up, then Intended Passage, Crown Attorney. Toward the rail, Damasca Davis backing away, Chief Bearheart still 12 and a half lengths off the lead and Laurie's main man. Three furlongs to run on the Queen's Plate. Stefan Otis has led every step of the way and there goes Victor Cooley. 
The issue heats up as Victor Cooley makes a three-wide sweep toward the leaders. Christy crunches dead game between horses. Those three across the track as they come to the top of the stretch. On the inside, Stefan Otis on the outside. Victor Cooley, Christy crunches between them. Firm dancers being worked on from well off the pace. They come to the final furlong, and Victor Cooley emerges with the lead. But a game, Stefan Otis is battling back on the inside. Victor Cooley and Eck, Stefan Otis's game, but Victor Cooley's got him at the 70-yard pole, and Victor Cooley and Emil Rem Sammy, they win the Queen's Plate. Stefan Otis second, Christy Crunch third. <laughs> wow. you, only, you only have to go mile and a quarter one time. <laughs> what, what he wants, yeah. Well, he said he, 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 he was not he was not real towards, but he more or less for the intermediate horse. Seven for but long, I noticed, six for I noticed you jump on them kind of early, and you still managed to oh, battle them in the end. That was your plan. Well, you know, Sean, of all the races I've won, like my saying is the gates, the race start when the gates open. Mm -hmm. Right. So I thought he would have been a little more aggressive on the start earlier. Yes. But, you know, it, it worked out that he didn't, he settled in nice. So, and, and those races going 10 for long, I think, you know, if you have a decent horse, a, a horse that you think is fit and capable enough, mm -hmm. you step them on two and a half alongs out mm -hmm. and you just go with it. You know, it, it, the, fitter, the horse with a bigger heart is going to, is going to hang on. Yeah, right. Okay, it looked it looked to me that his he, his heart really yeah, he just, in the end. So long, and like horse like that, you know, you know, you know, over the years you had horses that let's say running the gold cup or let's say the Kentucky Derby or let's say the the, the um Queen's Plate, uh, which is an extended long distance ten kilometers as the case may be. And and the saying is you only have to you only have to do that one time. Yes, yeah, you oh. only have to run it one time. Right? So, sure. Yeah. And uh, I think Sean today sent me a, a update on Victor Cooley, and he he wanted mm -hmm. you to see this this horse. That's Victor Cooley. Yeah, yeah, he's an old boy now, but the old boy now. There's a recent picture of him. Yeah, and where is he? he in that that still have his look, though, you know. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> in Kentucky. Oh, I was in Kentucky. Yeah, he's in Kentucky. I got that picture from, from Jen, Jen, Jennifer Morrison, man. She she was great. Oh, oh okay. Just send me that picture. Thank you, Jen. It was good for her to send me that you picture. Know, to... Hi, Jennifer. You all good? <laughs> you know what I find amazing about you guys, man, is that like earlier you were talking about like specific races you were talking about specific horses and like how do you guys got that memory for, i mean it is your thing it is your yeah. sport is the industry but like how do you remember so sharply about these these animals you know like what is it i don't know i guess like you said is our thing and and that's what you know that's all that's what like it's like our wives would say that's all that's all you do <laughs> Read, sleep, eat, and breed horses. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true, and I guess uh, it comes with the territory. If you're gonna be in the yeah. industry, you're gonna be in the sport. Um, you're gonna have to live it. You're gonna have to, you know, breathe it, and and that's all that matters. If you want to be a champion, right, you gotta think about it, and yeah. well, that's your thing, right? You know, like uh, there's a term I think we talk about, I'm um, Sean. People say, oh, yeah, oh, oh, you're lucky. Oh, Ram Sammy, you're lucky. But there's only one thing about luck, you know. Hard work brings luck. So, <laughs> I remember I remember back in Trinidad, you know, we sat by the, by the paddock all there, waiting for the horses to come out there yes, and, yes, go, yes. and go to spin. Yes. And the guys the guys would say to me on a Sunday morning, oh, Ram Sammy, you don't have to be here. You, you'll be riding all next week. Yes. I say, no, I want to be riding all every week, not only next week. I can be here. The day tomorrow and the next day, you guys don't come and make it better for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they want know, and then they want know why I did so good. But you know, the saying is, "So you're lucky." But hard work brings luck. Interesting. Of course, I'm a believer in that you gotta work hard. Yeah. 
Now, now speaking of speaking of uh, speaking of that, Chris, when he, when Chris came on the show, Chris said when things really start to change for him it was when he stopped taking advice from trainers. What's your <laughs> what's your relationship with trainers, and and was that the same for you, or did you always go by what the trainers said? No, you know what that is a fact that Chris said. You know, and my policy is you listen to the trainers in the parade ring. And when the gate open, that's when the race begin. And and is that a, like a, a mutual respect with the trainers and, and the jockeys? Because the train in the back of the minds, the trainers probably like, I know he ain't gonna listen to me, but I'm just gonna tell him anyways. Now, now as Sean being the trainer and you being a jockey, is is that fair to say that you guys expect this to happen? Um, look for myself, I don't know. The, the, trainers, trainers, the trainers give you. I don't know. I don't know what they expect, but I know what I expect <laughs> when they get, like I said, my, my policy. And even when I, 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 sp I speak to young writers, you know, on, on this present day, I tell them as much as, you know, whatever you're trying to tell you, you, you listen. But when the gate opens, that's when the race begins. Because sometimes the, a trainer wants you to go to the front and the horse. Yep. It's and the horse really, don't leave the gate exactly, and it's not the same horse you, you had you know, the day before. Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of scratchy, you know. He's it's kind totally of different. Yeah. yeah, and then you know he he get he, as the race goes on, he warms up and yeah, he gets it's different. But, so like I said, the race begins when the gates open. That's when the race begins. Mm -hmm. Now to, to this day, yeah, um, you know you being a successful jockey. And you've done it for such a long time. What's the the horse you think that is one of your favorite rides that you've ever ridden? That one horse. You know, one of like I would say the best horse I've ever ridden, and it, it stands out. And I've only ridden this horse twice. Call to account. Mm. Ooh, and and was, yeah, and he was like 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 the writers would say he was too stair job, but he was too stair job because I made it a little stair job. I rode him twice. I rode him in the in the Coxburg Gold Cup the for very first time I rode him and I won. I broke a track record with him. I never hit him. I just sat there. and then I rode him for the second time in, in Union Park with President's trophy and I broke an extra track record with him. And he won impressive again. And he was such a nice ride, and especially for some, because watching him run prior to me riding him, he looked like a horse you really had to, to get into, because the guys that rode him would, would really cut into him on me, or put a, a, a like you would say, would put a beating on him, yeah. and the horse never needed that. Mm. The two times I rode him, he, all you got to do is leave the gate with him and just let him let him run his race. Just you stare know, him around, like you say. I funny enough to hear you say that. Because after all these years of riding in Canada, California, yeah. you guys still go back home, man. You still go back yeah. home. <laughs> no, he is definitely no. out of the That horse was, was, was a superstar, man. No. If he goes... No, because anyway. when you remember, when yeah. you remember told me the same thing about that horse. I, I, he rode one time with one. I can't remember... Darling, now that I'm here, I can't remember his name, but this horse was so fast in Barbados, and he said that was the fastest horse he ever rode, period. And I know Ricky rode a lot of fast horses in Canada, so yeah, yeah, it know, was nice ones. Yeah, so it's it's great to hear you guys still come home to, to say some. Sean, horses you that. know, in it is when we brought horses between Trinidad and and Barbados, those mm -hmm. owners bought some quality horses, you know. True. Some exceptionally nice horses, it and those horses, they compete. yeah, they could compete anywhere in North America. Yeah, yeah you're right, you're right, because he might have been a hundred thousand dollar horse, yeah. hundred thousand pounds or something like that. I mean, Pound, yeah. I think, yeah, he was a hundred, he was, he was a lot of money, man. No, so, Mr. Yeah. Was a nice horse. It's, it's true, though, it's true. So, some horses uh, that come to us are really expensive and they shouldn't be there, but yeah, they're they're there. I didn't even think that that, that that was the case, but I guess now that you say it, um, I guess there's some truth to it. Um, but I mean, what, so if the horses are so good, then why are they competing 
is it just a competition? Because I know it's the king of sports. So I know for a lot of these guys, the money is not re even really a big deal. It's Thank just you. The, you just said it. You know, that's it. <laughs> the accomplishments, that's all. You, you know? have the money, and I'm I mean, bringing I, the best back home to annihilate the, everything. And that's, that's how these guys used to think back in those days. Yeah, I mean, I saw Ramsey sent his uh, big horse to Barbados to, to run in the Gold Cup and, and won it. And he was, I mean, he doesn't, he got a lot of money. He doesn't even care about the, Listen, the money. I think he just cares about the accomplishments. The whole, exactly, the whole atmosphere surrounding the Gold Cup for, for Ramsey there was the thing, just being there. And, I, and, you know, the way everything went was, that's what he enjoyed most about it compared mm -hmm. to, to North America. I show my, when you when you win a race as a rider and a trainer, you just go in, you just go in the, in the winner's circle and take a picture in here. No clap, no no trophy. That is, that is, it's, you it's don't big. even feel appreciated. Yeah, you don't even you don't even know if you win a race. Listen, that, listen it you're take sure. the thrill, it take that happiness out of it, like we get, you know, back in the Caribbean. Yes, my first day win, I won, and I remember like. You, you know, it, everything happened, and I realized I'm back at the barn cleaning yeah. more shit out the stove. <laughs> you know what I mean? In my, yeah. in my suit, you know what I mean? Dressed in the nines. And I, yeah. I was like, what just happened here? You know what I mean? I remember I went back outside. I was sitting down, like, stunned. And an old guy came up to me and told me, hey, kid, you're the, you're the, you're the guy that just won that steak. I said, I said yeah. He said, I cherish that moment, man. He said, I've been training here for 50 years. I never walked across that green thing, you know, but it was such a, it, I don't know. I just, I thought I was dreaming or something, you know, and then you just go home. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't happen. Yeah. And then get ready for the next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in Barbados, now you're going to party for a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, hang on. So, so, uh, okay. So you mentioned um, in Barbados and partying. So after winning a big race like that, Emil in, in Barbados. So for the rest of the months, is it you're done and party start after that, after winning like the Gold Cup or something? What, what really happens no, no. you guys? You know, the funny thing about the Gold Cup, the Gold Cup is always on a, that'll be only race on Saturday in the islands, right? So Sunday yeah. is a big work day. Yeah. Derek, Sunday is a big work day in the horse racing industry in the tropics, you know, because mm -hmm. Sunday is the only day that all the owners could come out and see their horses, see their team, so to speak. Mm. So that's, you know, yeah, even though you, you have a good day on the, um, the Gold Cup, you have to come out Sunday morning and work the other horses that didn't run in the Gold Cup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that, that's, that many in Trinidad, 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 Barbados don't really do that, but Trinidad for sure. Yeah, Sunday is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, Trinidad is, Barbados is very yeah, like, you know, like I remember, I remember one um, one weekend I went to ride in Barbados, and then I wanted to stay this Sunday, and then I asked, I said this to Joe Hadi, I said, Joe, could I stay Sunday? He said, um, he said, no, we have a big day tomorrow. <laughs> Anyhow, so I'm leaving to come back. My flight was ten o'clock, and I'm, and. Sean, let me have you at Panama at the time, right? Traveling, mm -hmm. flying. Now, Panama only, you only, only used to hear one call for the passengers. And if yeah. you miss the call, you miss the flight. <laughs> now I had my flight, and I look, all of a sudden, I look at my time, and I didn't, I didn't hear it. And I said, damn, it's about time. You should have been on the plane already. Uh -huh. so I went by and asked one of the attendants, and he said, oh, you missed the call, sir. That flight is probably about ready to land. Mr. Harin was think I um I really didn't really miss you know didn't want to come anyhow. Uh -huh. so what was the funniest part about this joke? Well, not this joke about this story. So now I went out to get a, a, a taxi to get back to the to the hotel I'm staying at. So when he when the, when the cab is coming up to me, I noticed the wheel warping a little bit, and I said to the uh, driver, "That wheel don't look too strong." So he, he went and he turned it with his finger and he said, Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so now we now we leave in the airport, you all right? 
I know like in those car I just say Prata and the, the, the car drop and I see the wheel running past the car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you see in the cartoons, the wheel running past the car. <laughs> the wheel drop off. Oh, <laughs> That's so true. No, no, no. So now I get to the hotel and about half ten o'clock I go home and I said, sorry, I missed I miss the fight. He wasn't happy, but then he was he sure I didn't, uh, I didn't, yeah, because I had asked him I wanted to stay, right? Mm. Well, I, I, I guess these things do happen, you know. And I mean, and you, I mean, that was one of your moments. I'm pretty sure everything worked out. You know, one of the better rides I in my career too, you know, was that Queen's Plate of Eden Wall. Oh, there, that was. Well, because I'm when you when you consider he he, you know, he was also come out so now we stuck with a position he didn't go in thirteen or wider because you know at that time they had it where you pick what number you're gonna draw and then so he was a speed horse I said to them um, it it make no sense going wide because we're gonna have to use more speed to get over he already got speed yeah. he's gonna break from the one hole he's gonna get himself out of trouble yes and he he was a legit sprinter right yes. And now here we have to go ten for long, so you only have to go ten for long one time. <laughs> well, we we got some video of that race, and I'm, I'm gonna hit play in a minute. But I wanted to say that I always remember that race because um, one of my good friends, and he was born here, but his parents were Guyanese, and he he probably put some money on that that uh, race. But he would tell me he was working, and he would be. He said he, he's only gonna play a meal around Sammy on that horse. And, um, and he always talked uh, highly about you because his father made the uh, silks for a lot of uh, jockeys at, at Woodbine. Uh, he ended up uh, passing away at an early age of 38 years old. And, but, I mean, we were friends for a very long time from the time we were teenagers. And, uh, but he always would speak highly of you. And I just wanted to, to pass that on to you because I, I knew that if he, if he was alive that he would – he would probably want you to hear those those words, but anyways, right. let's let's uh let's watch your queen split win. See the sprints are good. They're at the post. So they're off in the queen's plate stakes. Piper's a thunder from the outside. Pyramid Park is showing early speed, and the Gray Sterwins is right there. Edenwald maintaining position down toward the rail as they move in front of us for the first time. And it's John Velasquez and a Sterwins leading under the wire for the first time. Malakoff to attend the pace in second. Wanna runners to the outside of Malakoff. Then we have Edenwald who will save ground into the first turn as will Shaleli Slu who has Atlas Shrugs alongside. Then thinking out loud and a Pyramid Park, Piper's Thunder Bridge Cut is out wide. A Seifer Cat has two beaten Hot Deputy and the late running Ascot Bill. And they head into the backstretch off a half and 45 and four. This is a hot pace being set out here by Sterwins. Sterwins targeted by Malakoff and Wanna Runner. Edenwald gets a little nudge toward the inside. Then we have Shoaley Slew, who's back five lengths off the lead. Atlas Shrugs runs with Shoaley Slew. Piper's a thunder. Seven lengths from the front. Seifer Cats made up some ground. Pyramid Park thinking out loud. Ascot Bill, Bridge Cut, and Hot Deputy. Three furlongs to come, and Edenwald comes on on the inside of Sterwins. And it's Edenwald and Sterwins. Those two in a heated duel. Malakoff has asked for run. What a runner. Not this afternoon. Has backed out of it. And they're inside the quarter pole. Edenwald and Sterwins. Who will blink first? Sterwins on the outside. To the inside, Edenwald. Malakoff has flattened out a bit. Then Shoaley Slew. Edenwald on the inside is running the race of his life. They're in the final 16th of a mile. Edenwald and a Milran semi to win the 147th running of the Queen's Plate. Sterwins was second to show photo between Malakoff and Ascotville. 
Wow. That's Ooh. awesome, man. Yeah, you know, and this is another trivia, Sean and Derek. This is the first champion two-year-old to win the plate. You know, usually they finish start a champion two year and never materialize. Yes, correct. That's right. Yes. That's right. And even more so, he was a he was a legit sprinter too. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He just. I I saw the chat here. Somebody asked about Highland Legacy. I mean, that's a horse that both of us know pretty well. What are your thoughts yes. on him? Leroy. Leroy Groom, right? Yeah, Leroy. Yes, 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 yes. That's mm -hmm. a horse that I yeah. took to, to Ocala as a two year old and. He yeah, became um, he worked with him, yeah. a champion. Um, a world by well, he won the sovereign awards for champion two year old. And there seems to be a connection with uh, these Barbados and uh, these gold cups and these horses because here mm -hmm. Sterling's ran second, and they came back yes. later on and won yes. the, the gold cup in Barbados. Barbados. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. If another yeah. Patrick, and you are Patrick yourself, too. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now. Uh, and he came from off the pace that in, in Barbados. It was amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a pace. nice that was a nice run that day. Yeah, the Highland like a seahorse, that was um I think the best race I enjoyed with him was he was a sprinter and then we get him to go a mile and an eight. Mm -hmm. Steve. Okay. What was your secret to do that? Can you see it to be a lot of these horses were like sprinted type of horses, man. What, what's the secret? You know, the whole, you know, like when you, when you, if you go to university and you want to be a profession, a professional, any professional you want to be, whether it's a lawyer, a doctor, or anything, is one thing you also have to study. One subject you have to do is psychology. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's some bit of psychology. You know, you're riding a, a sprinter and you throw him on the lead and let him relax the, the way. Sean, you would have an, uh, an idea what I'm saying about because of the way we ride. And Chris Griffith, who's looking at the show with on some, you know, when they see like myself and you or Chris sitting on a horse on the lead and and the term they use in North America, they we throw their head away. Yeah. But, but because of our English, brought up see and the way we have a lot of horse we, we don't we do not throw their head away like they think we do yes, yes. i think that's the secret that is the success of me being on the lead because let's see myself on the lead or you on the lead or even chris griffith on the lead and they think we throw their head away but we go in 48 and 49 mm -hmm. and they put a north american guy and they go and throw their head away they go 46 and 47 yeah, 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 yeah. Because we do not because because the way we ride with that long rain, mm -hmm. we do not throw we have we have horses on our hand because we yes. like the term we use, the English term, you drop our hands and mm -hmm. I guess it's like when we learn it's like when we learn to get up, yeah, keep your hands down. So we keep our hands down, but we have so much a horse on us. Yes. So when like that's when I'm on the lead and they come with me, boom I gone again because I yeah. I don't have a loose line. I have mm -hmm. horse. I, 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 yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a bit of a bit of trickery, then. That's not like you. you no, that's like, a whole, yeah, as a whole. Yeah, which in North American people don't seem to understand. They think you go the, the way we ride. We from the Caribbean ride. We go on the lead, and they think we like they say we loose line. We do not do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I would lose line a horse only if it's logging in or logging out because you don't, the whole idea, you don't, it's like like fish on line when a horse mm -hmm. is logging in or logging out. You don't want to grab because then okay. they bite whatever side you, yeah. you know? Yeah. In other words, when you do that, you, you yeah. want to try to even up the bit, make them comfortable. Yeah. Give them, let them, don't feel the bit in the mouth, in other words. Yes. Yeah. Unlike, unlike when we put a horse on the lead. And these they see just galloping, they think we just turn the head away and loose yes, line yes. them. Yes. It's totally wrong. Yes. We have so much a horse on us. That's so, why I don't have, that's why I think that's why I'm so good when I'm on the front. With yes. a horse. So you always have something in Yeah, the, I'm much or, more. That's yeah. Much so more I, than I, I mean that uh Chris was saying earlier that 
uh, you help so many of many of the jockeys and so many of the guys around the track and stuff. Uh, jockeys, why jockeys? And um, right, well, people, horse people in general. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and for for skills like that, do you do you think that the guys um, tend to not, uh, yeah. you know, like to draw towards you when it comes to to that style of writing or to take some advice or information from you, or they just kind of go a different way? You know, like Sean would notice, like when, in in the Caribbean, we we would be able to talk to each other and ask, you know, and ask different writers about different things. But when you came to North America here, they're not like that at all. But he's like when I first came here, I couldn't leave the gate. Mm. Every horse I left the gate, I was down in the back, and I couldn't understand why why I couldn't leave the gate. But you know, Sean in in the Caribbean, we ride a little bit European, where we don't leave running, yeah, because we kind of Want to run home? I couldn't leave the gate, and I couldn't leave the gate from every horse. I'm falling back on the mouth, and I finally figure out I gotta leave, leave, and leave running all the way until they get into gear mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. I get up and take a hole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now, Sean, you would know, Derek. You probably might might have figured out I'm the best thing leaving the gate. Mm. If they want a horse to leave the gate fast, they come to me. But I was, I was going to ask you a question on that, and it's funny that you, oh. you brought it up because I got a buddy, right, and he would say, "And me, Ram Sammy, you're you're the fastest man to get out the gate. There's no there's no doubt about that. I don't know how you do it, but he would say, I would say like, how does he do it? And he said, no, 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 he's joking. But he said, and me will have a switch." That he can open up his gate before the other riders. So, so how do you do that? Derek, you're supposed to be saying something like that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> now they're gonna be coming looking for the switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh heck! No, you have been trouble. Uh, but you're you know, the fastest like, man I see yeah. get out the gates. I don't know how you do it, man. You know, like like I was saying. Just now, you know, I couldn't leave the gate when I first came here. And then I finally figured out, you just throw their head away and come out, just let them come out running. And like, when young, like in recent years, a few young guys started, like even the top guys here, the, the two apprentices, two Japanese kids here, they come out and a, and a few young guys started and said, look, come back in. I said, I said, one time I'm going to tell you, whatever the train I tell you, I say, right now, you don't have a clue about pace. Mm -hmm. You don't know, you know, starting. I so said, when you leave the gate, just throw their head away and you just let them run for a good half of a long or more before you even try to take a hole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you, you understand. And now we see all those kids leaving. I know if you guys paying attention to the yeah, young yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And every, and every, every young rider come, you know, even if a guy come from the islands, I go by and, and they ride and happen to see riding a race and I'm, I'm nearby in the room. And I and I would tell them, you know, so if it's, I know they're out there for the first time in North America, I would tell them, you know, the racing there is different. Leave the gate, leave them running, let them go. Like my my first thing come now the gate. Now when I leave the gate, I always my first is, is always a chirp, you know, mm. <laughs> and let them and let them go. But is it safe to say? <laughs> This generation, I, I, I speak to our friends still up in Canada. Is a more speed oriented race, racing going on now at Woodbine? Like, I, they go, no. They, you know, guys kind of go and make races. Um, you know, you, you got to be up there to, to win the dash. I. I, I don't agree with no I I think I because I've been watching the races and I I think everybody break back and I'll get them back and ski you know instead of okay okay letting them run uh -huh, uh -huh. I think they're more into you know back in our time Sean we want, everybody wants to look nice we always commenting and always like heckling each other about <laughs> how horrible you look no no looking horrible is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> looking good is, is not a way to go at all. Now looking ugly and clumsy in the saddle is, is, is the way to go. <laughs> but I think that's the reason why, why I might be staying on even longer. <laughs> so that I might have to start looking ugly in the saddle. <laughs> oh, God. That, I want to ask you, 
Uh, speaking of looking ugly and, and all these kind of stuff. Now, as an award winner, sovereign award winner, all these accomplishments and so forth, right? Um, does that, how does that add up? Like, how does that, as a jockey, you know, we spoke with Patrick Husband last week. Like, does that force you to do anything differently or does that you just be yourself and give you more confidence to even be yourself even more? How, how, how does that feel, all those accomplishments underneath your belt? It, I just, um, I just continue to be myself. I don't, don't. For me, it doesn't. I don't make me feel no. Um, to do anything different. I just continue to be myself, and be myself is is pretty strict and and steady. You know. Mm. Yeah. My 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 whole life about me, everything I do. You know, I just I just want to do it proper mm -hmm. and even since i was growing up as a kid you know but it was fetching water i want if we have to fetch five buckets of water i want to fetch six i want to bring six <laughs> i could be the winner i don't mind if it would take me extra <laughs> extra 10 minutes and so on and, and but it was but it, it was clean in the yard i want to have my spot featherless <laughs> you know <laughs> The cleanest spot. Mm. That's that says a lot. You know, yeah, that, that says a lot. It's always competitive, you know, like yeah. I, I didn't I didn't get a chance to say, you know, I, I grew up in Guyana with absolutely nothing. We had, at six o'clock we had we had no running water, no electricity, nothing of the sort. So at um at six o'clock when when the place, seven o'clock when it's dark, there's nothing to do. We either go out fishing or go out running, because there were four boys, we go out exercising. Mm -hmm. Or catching fish, or counting the stars. <laughs> we had no radio, no TV, no nothing to listen, you know. And it was something to do or something. And then when we get in bed, we we hear the mosquitoes singing over us. We figure, we try to figure out if that one just is full of blood or no. <laughs> or that, <laughs> that one just bit me and it's full of blood. <laughs> How, how can you tell if it's full of blood? Yeah, we just just see all the different different songs, you know, because we try to make we try to be competitive. We try to say that. We, we yeah. like, you know, so and like even going to school, like like see that's why I guess at going to school because we had, like I said, we had not, nothing to spoil us. So we went to school. It's, for me, it was competitive because. I had no TV to watch or whatever, no, you know, no rage to listen to. So at school, I enjoy going to school because, you know, here we have subjects and lessons that, you know, I can be competitive there and and be the best at it. That's that's really interesting because um, there's some guys here in in, um, in Toronto too that uh, they come from way out east, Newfoundland, and and they tell they tell stories of just you know just not watching a lot of TV growing up and just kind of out in the outback just doing their thing and you know now that they're older they excel at what they do so maybe perhaps not having TV around helps right you know as well as one one thing not having TV I, I remember at, I think it was fourteen it was about two o'clock in the afternoon this is out in Guyana on the other side of the Demara River. And my uncle had bought a piece of property and he's cleaning it out for farm. We're cleaning the land for farm. And he sat down under the trees having a snack. I'm looking through between the, the patches and I saw the North Star, two o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. That's how good my eyes were. <laughs> <laughs> At two o'clock wow. in bright sun, right? And then even when I moved to Trinidad, I could see it. I find a location. I know they said it, the North Star is the brightest star on the planet. It mm. really is. Mm. I could have seen it. At any time of the day, mm. wow. and now, now I struggle to see far. Now my problem is not seeing; is not see. I can see near good, but far I have trouble. And hence the reason. Hence the reason I'm always on the lead because I get out in front. <laughs> well, you know, as we go along, something have to deteriorate at some point. You know, for me it was my hair, and you know, and I'm happy to grow the beard instead so <laughs> so you adjust <laughs> yeah. no but that's, that's one 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 thing in my lifetime i could say i, I was amazed about i could see the north star 
any time of the day. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it stands out so bright. Yes. But when, uh, when you look back at your life now, Emil, coming from poverty and to where you are now, yeah. um, how, how do you handle that? How do you, you know, how do you feel about the the success? Yeah. All the successes you have had from, you know, like, from look, there to yeah. where you are now. You know, like the saying goes, you you, you know, you, you hear that over the years you hear people say they, you know, what I've done for what life I've done for that, but you know, I, I've come a long way for, for me, just looking back sometimes, you know, like it's 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 more than a dream, you know, it's just like it's really a fairy tale, just like my career took off mm-hmm. and, and happened to be. I was never involved in the horses at all and and it just happened, it just turned out. And and to the extended you know as it has gone mm-hmm. and still going mm-hmm. and and i still enjoy it but mm-hmm. it's words can't put it together for me but do you really still enjoy it like i mean because your success is not as it yeah. you know things are a little cool right now yeah yeah me you discussed this when we last talked obviously i saw you winning some races um, last year at Fort Hiri. But are you yeah. happy with that? Are you truly happy with what you're doing now compared to you know, a few years ago when you were killing with so, Yeah, you see the thing about it, Sean, right? Um, such is life. And, um, you know, as as athlete, it doesn't matter what, whether you're a jockey, you're a soccer player, a football player, whatever. As an athlete, when when you get old, the public is the one to put you down. You know, they they start mm-hmm. crying. Oh, he's an old man. He's an old man. And and now, now we get to this age, we can see, and then we could actually remember. Let's say like when Hall was playing, and he let's say he was in his thirties, and then all of the all of a sudden you hear people say, oh, he's an old man. Yeah. And now we're at this age and say thirty is is actually a young, and you're yeah, peaking yeah. at your thirties. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. know at our for ourselves that at thirties and. In the late thirties, early four, you're 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 peaking. Yes. And the correct. public is cry you or oh, you're an old, you know, and hence yeah. the reason athletes they don't get a chance. I mean, look at um Tom Brady. Yes. Yes. You know, people feel been crying and knocking him down, but the guy, you know, I I personally think he's peaking at his at this older age, you know. Not what? at this old age. He just what? keep going, so to speak. Yeah. But what keeps you going? I mean because I mean, especially mentally, yeah. right? Well, it's got to be a mental thing now because yeah. up to 10, 15 years ago, you were the man. Yeah. You're not. I guess, you know what, what really keeps me going? I, I enjoy it. I'm obsessed with it. I really enjoy riding a horse. Mm-hmm. Like this morning, I was up and I got on three horses, three two year olds. And I, I enjoy it. I, mm-hmm. I think that's the main thing to keep me going. Mm-hmm. And I go out in the morning and it, and it's not like work for me. Mm-hmm. It, it's my love, my fun. Yeah, yeah. My, I really, really enjoy it. I'm, a, I'm obsessed with it. If I don't get out in the morning, get my horse, I, I don't feel. Do you like they started? Do you have a time limit to hang it up? No, I, I don't think I put a time limit on it. I, I, I think when I can't do it anymore, I'll, I'll be my time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, don't no. forget you know, Gilbert Searchwell. He was our man for, for longevity in, in, in Fort Erie. I don't <laughs> yeah, see him anymore, can... though. Searchwell, yeah, Gilbert. But, yeah, no, I know he's speaking about Yeah, I haven't seen him. Mm-hmm. He was around. I saw him last year a couple times. Yeah, but not right yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's interesting, Emil, because if you were not writing, I mean, what. What do you? What would you do? Like, is there something else that you got lined up for the future, or, you know, no, or, actually, you know, we haven't thought that far yet. No, I haven't had no nothing planned. If if I wouldn't be riding, I'd probably be running. <laughs> running. If, if I'm not riding, I'd probably be running, <laughs> running away. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know something had me behind that. 
<laughs> oh man. I mean, I mean, like so some of us, I mean, like Ricky and myself, and you nobody know, got into the other side of the business yeah. and that stuff. You have no interest in that at all? I you know, I I probably hope to, to I would I would love to train, you know, to get a, a cup of red delight mourners. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely would um I kinda have that in, you know. Mm -hmm. In, in thought and somewhere along the line because I really enjoy the horses, you know, and like I said, yeah. my, nobody, I would be glad to write for me because my only instruction is I don't want you getting a fight with my horse. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> you're not getting a fight. You, only way you lose a ride from my barn is if you get, if you take too much of a hole on a horse that wants to run. I will give a little advice. I could give a little advice. <laughs> I used to like writing bad to myself. But <laughs> I love training more than writing now because you get, get more enjoyment. You see? It's a whole different you, thing. Yeah, the different, but the same feeling though, because sometimes it takes so much to get a horse to win a race. You know what I mean? We have the jockey, we just sit on them. We don't really yeah, know yeah. what problems you have to deal with and that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. But you get that kind of joy of I've overcome all of these things and I did things differently and got the job done and you know it's like it's, yeah, I'm just you know there's a, the good other feelings there's good there's still a lot of nice feelings other than right yeah there. you found the right switch <laughs> yeah I think a lot of us uh, <laughs> I, you know what too I noticed I saw Ted had um his center of bus is, is Basquez he he's still getting on horses in um in Ocala oh yeah yeah, it's Hosentor, eh? Hosentor. Yeah, 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 little J, yeah. Yeah, he's still, he's still, um, I mean, I saw him like, like 10, 15 years ago, and he was an older guy, and he's still, yeah. he got to be at least in his 70s, man. Yeah, because he had, you know, the, the different thing with me, you, me, you, Sean, uh -huh. is that we don't look like our early, our early 40s. <laughs> 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 I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> hey, you guys are amazing, man. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. You guys are so strong. I mean, for, for jockeys, and perhaps because of so many years of holding uh, the reins and pulling back horses, it make you strong. You know, and make you able to. That's the wrong word. That's the wrong term you use in pulling back horses. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 you boss. Right sorry, trip. boss. <laughs> you I'm find sorry. The right trip. Switch it on. <laughs> I forget. There's no pulling back with you, no. Mister Out Front. <laughs> I'm the guy with the switch. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I remember, I, I remember you had a fall one time. It was a Laurie Severe's horse. I fell in. I think the horse broke his shoulder, and I remember you were, you were, you were. Oh, you shook a yeah. bad man. As as a uh, favorite in the race too. Yeah, I a think it storm, storm the barrier or something like that. Storm the barrier, yeah. Does it name? Storm the barrier. Yes, I remember yeah. Richard. Richard Edgel, He, I think Richard was out there, and I remember Richard saying, "Boy, it don't look good, man." I mean. I mean, the you know, I had a, the worst, one of the, the most ugliest, well, I can't remember it, so I think it has to be, until now, the only thing, I fell off of a horse for Mike Doyle of Philly, I think it was a 30,000 claim or something. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, the only thing I remember, I going to the start and I, I passed Hazi and I said, Hazi, I was worn over myself, I said, Hazi, this horse looks as bad as it feels, <laughs> and that's like about... 10 minutes, that was we turn around about 10 minutes before post. That's the only thing I can remember until now. Wow. Because I remember we went in the gate and I know what happened. Uh -huh. I guess I wake up in the hospital. I don't know what happened to the horse, but I think she snapped both her front ankles. Wow. And I was, I guess I had a concussion, I guess, until now, because I, until now, I still cannot remember. Only thing I remember is passing, I was about 10 minutes before the race. I said, this horse looks as so bad as it feels. 
Mm-hmm. And we went in the gate and boom, we left. And I think somewhere down the back, so I just snapped it to front ankles and I went catapulted. Wow. And then the worst, then in Barbados, it was in there in 2011, I think. Mm-hmm. And I was, was going to ride a horse in the Gold Cup. Um, I worked the horse for anyhow in company with, and the problem was was, it was a young apprentice working the other horse, mm-hmm. and we were going once around, and that morning, the night we went out to some function, me and Lisa, and Lisa said she's coming to the track in the morning, and then we get up in the morning, yeah, said, yeah. so then I said, oh come on. Let's go. So anyhow, so Lisa came. Luckily, she came that day. Anyhow, so we're working these two horses. We're going once around. And I'm trying to tell the kid, which, I mean, working a five furlongs. Mm-hmm. To let the kid, let the horse, to let his horse gallop, because I'm tugging my horse too much, you know? Yeah, yeah. To let his horse gallop along. He goes, you know, Barbara's is a young boy, so he's just going slow. Yeah. When you yeah. should be just galloping on a little bit. Yeah. Anyhow, by the process of me fighting my horse so much for him to get, we left the pole and he's still going slow and I'm still tugging and then boom, the saddle slipped away. I know if you were there, you should remember this. Anyhow. I heard about it. Yeah, it's I too- broke I my shoulder. Gonna- yeah, I heard about that. I broke my shoulder so ugly. And since then I came back and that, and that, and that since then my business here got because I, I couldn't start the start the season. Uh-huh. Couldn't start do, do you ever season. remember who that apprentice was that was riding that horse? No, that morning I couldn't know. It was a, I, I, I'd be lying if I I can't, cannot remember. But sure, I think what caused most of the trouble that day, mm-hmm. luckily Lisa, Lisa did come. So she ended up coming to the hospital with me. Yes. And I must, and I must say thanks to... Um, Um, no, the girl at the the racing office, Pierce, Pierce's wife. Oh, okay, uh, Rosette Pierce. Rosette, yeah, thanks to Rosette, yeah. she did a great job in getting everything organized well because it was so bad. And I, I really thought I might, it, my shoulder might have slipped out, so I, yeah. I was trying to tell them pull it back and see if they could pop it back in place. <laughs> And Lisa like, said she was in the hospital and she never heard me scream so much. I can't remember nothing. She were, they had two big, strong guys trying to yank it back in place. But I guess they probably made it worse. Yes, yes, it was broken. And yeah, and then, you know, what worked out best is that uh, the guy, the surgeon, mm-hmm. Dr. Thorn, who was a, he was the head of orthopedics here in Etobico. And he just mm-hmm. retired and come back to Barbados, but he's always in Barbados. But you yeah. know, so he did the operation. And oh, man, what a hell of a! So I have about like seven or eight screws in there permanently stayed. Right. And um, but the major operation he did, you wouldn't even see a scar or I don't know how he did it, mm-hmm. how he put it together without a scar. I guess he <laughs> blew it. <laughs> and only scar is it had one <laughs> one one screw to take out when I came back. Yeah. Uh-huh. And take it out here, and that's the only scar, the ugly stitch you leave back when it put in. But what he did, cut around the whole shoulder. Whoa. Not a scar, you wouldn't believe. Hmm. Whoa. Oh. I gotta ask you this, uh, Emil, because um you said you got on a couple uh, two or three two year olds. Uh, I think this morning or, or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I know when we spoke with Chris, Chris said that um, once he got over the woodbine thing, you know that was it. You know he didn't really care to be there too much. Uh, he, he loved where he was at. Um, what's that like for you now? Um, are you writing mostly at Fort Erie, or are you uh, still uh, try to do? juggle in between the two tracks or what's it what's it like um like the saying goes for us you know as a writer wherever the business comes you know so i guess it's between the two tracks but to be to be more realistic i i guess i'll have more business at the fort erie mm-hmm. so, 
So I mean, I'm right now I'm, I'm at Woodbine. I'm, I like I work in the morning at Woodbine. Mm-hmm. So I got onto yours this morning for Nathan. I get on a few years. Yeah, some nice tools. Mm-hmm. Nathan's you quite, yeah. yeah when I, you know, when I, you know. I'm not Derek. Derek. Yeah, no, I know you. I talk about yeah. Derek. Derek, yeah. Derek, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Squire's son. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> good. Good to know. So, so, yeah. w- would you be riding some of those horses? I'm hoping to, but you know, when they show up good in the mornings, all of a sudden I can't ride them. <laughs> I, I, I'd be, be hoping to. Me and Nathan's always been good. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We've been together since way back. Forever. Forever. With Joe Hadid, yeah. Of course, forever. Now, I see you smiling. I see you smiling and everything. Are you still having lots of fun? At, like doing that? Yeah, oh yes. Without doubt. I'm I'm not good, like I said, I like always said I don't go out get up and go to the morning to get no horse because I have a job to do or I have to get no horse. I go because I enjoy doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy doing it. And just like you said, Sean, you, you, you like you enjoy training, like I really my whole career, since I was a youth, way back started with Adin, <clears throat> I enjoy getting my young horses mm-hmm. and see them as they mature and progress. Of course, yes. You know, like back home, how, how we would always, yes. they would start in, in the F, in some maiden and then go up the road and you see them. That was That's, has always been my thing, you know. That way you pick the, the good ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you sort them out. Yes, yes, yes. And you find the right switch, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> now how, how competitive is uh the guys in in the jockeys room at Fort Erie um now that you've transitioned kind of mostly down to Fort Erie now what's it what's the atmosphere like well the guys they're all pretty good they're, they're very competitive I mean the thing is what's kind of not helping me in Fort Erie is I'm not out there in the mornings you know Mm-hmm. So I, I like I, I'm never out there in the morning. So, like Sean, you would know you have to be there. You gotta be yeah for every yeah, like don't, don't matter who you are. You have to be yeah. On, yeah. You have to be yeah. on the track and show up. You show your face and get on yeah. horse. So. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's you know, interesting. When I, yeah, when I went to Fort Erie in '91, it was the first time I drove. Sean, you know, remember I, you have a car. In Barbados or Trinidad, and you drive maybe ten thousand kilometers a year, and that was a lot of driving. Yes, yes. That first year I was going for Erie. <laughs> I drive thirty nine thousand kilometers in the one. Year. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's four years of driving in Trinidad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seven days a week because Christopher was just born, so I didn't want to. My first kid was born, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to miss a day with him, yeah. so I had to track and head back home. Yes. Now, uh, since you brought it up, how, how how's that balance? Like, the, how important is that for you to spend time with your your kids and you know your family? You know, that, that's, that's such that. a good question. You know, because when when you come to think about it, our life as a jockey, like even from even in the islands, because every Saturday. Every weekends in North America and every public holiday is racing. Mm-hmm. So you see how, how hard it is for family life. Mm-hmm. Everything. Every then. every weekends and every family holiday, and then somebody like me who's dedicated like 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 crazy. I don't mm-hmm. eating is not my thing. Mm-hmm. I can't. I don't eat, and I you know I don't. I can't take the kids out to eat dinner and have fun. You know. I we go to dinner, and I would just have my son, and they'd have their fun. And then, when our last child was born, Emily, I mean, then we went out to dinner. All the waiters couldn't believe because they say, "Oh, this little kid, three, four year old, five year old, what you want? Oh, I have a salad. Oh, but you have chicken strip. You have this. Oh, no, no, I have a salad. They're all so amazed, yeah, because that's all I ate, right?" <laughs> As a little child, she all she wanted was salad. <laughs> the waiters couldn't believe. Oh, but you have well, all these kids strip a chicken strip and this and fries and that. No, no salad. <laughs> so, 
Somebody was, uh, yeah, like you about see how tough life it is, Derek. How tough a life, a family life it is. No weekends, no public holidays, all, mm -hmm. all out, you know? It's mm -hmm. tough. You really, really have to think, Lisa, that I have a job with kids. Yes, Derek. Yeah, I guess we always got to thank the ladies um, for, for, yeah. for picking up our slack sometimes, you know? But as we get older, we get wiser and we make better yep. decisions, you know? Sean, you were say something? Yeah, somebody mentioned there just know if you will come back to Barbados to write. <laughs> On the turf? <laughs> That's all we have. Don't worry, we we'll changed that yet. <laughs> That's all we got, boss. Oh, okay. Is, is that right. a no? Oh, no, that's, that's not a no. That's a yes. That's a yes. You will come back, all right. Yeah. And, and do you, do your kids like horses? Jennifer's asking. Um, you know, um, of all, it's funny enough. You know, of all the kids, I got three boys, and um, they don't mind the horses, but they're not. They don't like say love the horses. The only person as a child showed the most liking and most into riding was um Emily. Okay. The boys were, you know, they're just. They just, they just like the horse as a horse. From afar, from afar. Yeah, yeah, but not, not into the riding. Didn't, didn't mind, didn't mind being around them and stuff. Yes, yes. But wasn't in, into the riding. So I, I would, I would to the answer to that question, I would say, no. Because mm. when, you, when we say like, we mean like, like riding them and just want, you know, have a horse. Yes. But no, only Emily was the only person that showed any kind of interest in that sort of way, you know. Like for myself, but I guess. I loved horses from from very small, and you know what I mean. I was always horse crazy, man. So once you know like that is is a no. Yeah. Well, I, I was well, gonna say I'm, no. That's no. I got involved at sixteen and a half, sixteen and a half, and boom. <laughs> but, 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 but you weren't. <laughs> but another jockey who who rode late too was was Goffy Griffith. I don't. I think he was eighteen when he started. You know what I mean? And and look at him. Ricky, Chris, yeah. it's everybody is right. But he started late also. I, so I was gonna so, ask if, if the if is um if is is rare or if it, or if it's normal for for uh for the kids of of jockeys to to write as well or if it's not if it doesn't happen too often. Um uh, I mean there's there's some guys who rode and the kids <laughs> might have ridden also, but is that normal? Like I mean I mean, basketballers, they, the kids tend to play basketball because they're so tall. Mm -hmm. But for jockeys, if you're height and your weight and stuff like that, is it the same thing for you guys? You, you see, the, the thing, the difference with jockeys, kids, because we starve ourselves so much that we let the kids eat so many days. <laughs> <laughs> we feed the kids more or we couldn't eat. So that they don't get to that stage where they want to ride. Yeah. <laughs> No, My but like for, for your foot. question, Derek, there, there's a few um, a few writer, writers with kids that, that mm -hmm. turn out to be writers too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And, and good writers also. Good writers also. Definitely. And then and then you have you have guys like um my friend Tony Grant who 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 who's a sire sires. I call him a sire sires, you know what I mean? Because um his his grand his grandchildren are the are the real real writers, you no? Know? Rash yeah. Hughes and Chris Husbands and those type of guys. And he I don't think I don't think he ever put his, his leg over a horse yet. But he, he has two champions in the family, you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> sometimes it happens you know, a few generations down, you see, you know, especially if you're small. You gotta yeah, you yeah, yeah. find Keeping the family small and Barbados is a place where there's a lot of passion and love for for horses. You find a lot of now, people liking it, man. Now I know that um that Patrick husbands flirted with retiring a, a few times. Have you thought about that? Or you just kind of pushed that aside and say when it happens, it happens. What's what's it like for you? I never given a thought to retirement at all. I didn't. Well, I guess when it happens, it happens. <laughs> I've but, but have you been hurting? Been... Have you been hurting that back? I know Sunday Patrick has hurt a lot. That the pain is get to him. Yeah. Has the 
ever got to you where you said I can't do this no more? Did it pain? No, I I guess I manage my my you see the problem is I'm um, Sean. I I suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. Right. Where's that in the knees? Rheumatoid, no, and it's flare up in any any anywhere in your oh, body, oh. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And okay. and and that's been happening since 1985. Now this oh. is just you know people are of arthritis, and I think arthritis because you all but rheumatoid. You know, rheumatoid is is the one um thing they spend the most money researching mm-hmm. every year. They spend more money than cancer on rheumatoid re- on on rheumatoid research because How rheumatoid. Do How? I don't know. It, it, I I honestly think you know if if you just when, when it flares up and if you sit on it, it's worse. You got. Oh 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 oh! That's that's not like a Patrick husband's. Um, Sound like a Patrick husband's battery, battery, <laughs> a battery yeah, electric. That- Usually, that's when somebody pulled the plug on you. But that, that, I'm going to give, I'm going to give the Ryan Sammy's the benefit of the doubt that nobody pulled the plug on him. Uh, oh man, I, 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 he's going two and a half hours. I think it, his battery wasn't fully charged. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not an inside joke. <laughs> uh, well, partner husband went four. He, he his battery is well charged. He can be prepared. I, I, well, I gotta get, I mean, we gotta forgive Emmy because he didn't plan to come on his phone. So um that might be the problem. So I'm hoping that he's charging up a bit and ready to go. Well, I, I was never we'll give him a we'll give him some a few minutes and see if uh if Lisa managed to get the uh the charger back in the phone or if, if he gets it back in and and then uh you know he might be able to get to come back on again and if not yeah, then you know, I, I, I want to. I want to hear more about this, this arthritis thing, man. I, I, I didn't. I know he. We always saw Emil in pain. You know what I mean? But I didn't know what the pain was. Have you ever had those kind of situations? But that's why I'm back in Barbados. Yeah, I, 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 I even had to get surgery <laughs> for my spinal cord, C four and C five. Ah, the barber's back. <laughs> <laughs> I touched something accidentally. <laughs> my other finger. <laughs> continue, boss. Continue. I want to hear about this arthritis thing, man. Oh yeah, what I'm saying, right? No rheumatoid. You know, when you hear arthritis, people think, "Oh, you're old, and that's why you get arthritis." But mm-hmm. a rheumatoid can affect a one-day-old baby. Okay. And they spend the most money annually researching rheumatoid than any other thing. Okay. Anyhow, when it flares up, Sean, it's, it's the thing is, it's, it's brutal. And I said since 1985, I've been suffering with it. And um, you have to work through it. The only because if you sit and and go, it's it's worse. So you have to work through it. And the only really of all the medication and everything else, the only thing I find that works is ice. Okay. Ice costs nothing and works the best. Now, do, do you it. eat this ice, or do you put this ice on the areas that you, you, ice, you ice it? You you put it on. Have you ever tried laser treatment? I try everything, everything you could think about. I mean, even in California, I've been to some of the some of the top guys, even all out in Beverly Hill, Malibu, Pasadena. Mm-hmm. I've been to some specialists. Mm-hmm. They couldn't couldn't put nothing. Couldn't put nothing together. Well, I, but it, I've seen you. I've seen you in pain before. I mean, like you, you used to walk backwards. I used to fall <laughs> off a horse and that kind of stuff. But I just figured, you know, what I mean, no, that that situation was um was my sciatica. So I, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, you, know, you know, just like you hear, it never happened to you, right? So, so oh, yeah, it it, it did. Yeah. I had, okay. yeah, so, any, Derek, you ever, you ever yeah. have a sciatica pain problem? No. Anyhow, no. just no, like no. you heard the word sciatica, and over the years, being around the city, we're trying to see this guy good. And then the next day, I see him, he can't walk. And I said, What happened? He said, oh, My sciatica flared up. I said, oh, Okay. Yeah. I didn't have a clue what sciatica was until it happened to you. Man. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 yeah. No. The, sci- 
the sciatica nerve, you have two, one in your left and one in your front, when the base of your skull to the bottom of your heel, a left mm -hmm. and a right. Mm -hmm. And when you get pinched, it's, it's brutal, no matter I what. Used, I used to get pains going right down from my, like, top of my back, right down to yeah. my leg. Right like down. Leg. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And don't matter, you don't matter what pain killer can, nothing can help this thing. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're right. And just, you're right. just you're like right. it happened, just like it happened, it popped back into place. So the only thing mm -hmm. if it happened to anybody, you haven't just suggest any little stretches, any little stretch they can do. Mm -hmm. Don't matter what. I remember I spent on in line, I spent almost thirty thousand dollars seeing all the treatment. You know, here mm -hmm. people talk about the hyperbaric hyperbaric treatment. Yes, 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 yes. I used I said about ten treatments of five hundred dollars treatment. Yeah, went in the high hyperbaric chamber. You know, they said these hockey players are going to have baric chamber. Yeah. That, that what a bunch of crap that is. All it all it is is all it is is pure oxygen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So just but still the best treatment yeah. is ice. Yeah, and the, I wouldn't you know if you ever have it if it ever happened to you or you know anybody happen don't don't spend a cent. Go and see no doctors or anything. Mm -hmm. All just let them stretch any little stupid stretch they can do, mm -hmm. and just hope it pop back in. Mm -hmm. And ice, ice is the only I, only other thing. I, I found I found one thing that really helped me with that was a deep, I got a deep I, massage I, one time. A real, I mean, yeah, yeah. when it, when she put her two fingers into the where the second nerves are, Jesus, I mean the pain of getting her. I thought I was walking with her hands in my back for a week, but I'm telling her, like, it was the only time I got relief from it to a point where, um, you know, it was, so what happened with me? A horse fell on me and when I was in India, flipped and fell on no. me and my back went, I was only 17 at the time, so you can imagine, I had back problems throughout my whole career. That's not uh, good. <laughs> Emil, that's a long time to have those pains from 1985, man. I, I gotta yeah. say, my hat, my hat, my hat's off to you, man. No, to, for so many years of enjoying yeah, that, that stuff. It's horrible when those things, when it's a flare up, and you never know when it flare up. The worst mm -hmm. place I don't ever like it flaring up is in my cavicle, in my uh, my mm -hmm. collarbone. Yeah, it's making oh. it was brutal though. Wow. Now, now at, at the track and and um, amongst race fans and stuff, um, um, like, do you? What's your? What's the perception? What like do you get a bad rap or do you you find that you're still like a glory kind of jockey? Like, first, just from a personal opinion, yeah. uh, you know, sure. not doesn't matter what people think. From a personal opinion, yeah. from you. Personally, um, I think I think the the fans out there, I, I get a, a, an okay rap, and whatever else goes, I, it doesn't bother me. So that's that's about the main thing. It, it you know, whether guys go negative on the other side, I just I just go along with them and be happy with a smile, mm -hmm. while they be you know, because <laughs> I can handle it. And that's that's the one thing, you know. I, I can I can really handle the ups and the downs, even more so the downs, you know. Nice. The reason why I asked you that is because uh just going back a little bit to when Mr. Husbands was on last weekend, and he you know, he mentioned, you know what, and it's something that, that sets you guys apart or the top guys really is that you can't really think about what other people are saying too much. You just try to do your job, try to win, and whatever else happens, happens, right? You know, That's people can say whatever they want, but you you do you know you, you do what you got to do. Are we frozen? It looks so. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we had a power surge here. Oh, okay. <laughs> as, as a Canada, a Canada surge. Yeah. It, it was too hot today. <laughs> <laughs> Too hot is only about what, seven, uh, 15 or 16 degrees. Yeah, so. it got up to 16 today. And I remember the yeah. first time so I came here when in 1987 um, uh -huh. and I wrote a race. And I wrote a race and I went in the jocks room and I'm freezing. Mm -hmm. It was October, right? And it's 23 degrees. I know in Trinidad and Barbados, we get a 23, it's cold. You got, you got all right. 25 and 26 and higher is norm. Yeah. yeah. I'm in the room. I got two turtlenecks and I went to thermal. I'm freezing. 
And it's like, you see, oh, what a lovely day. I come in and I remember Robbie King washing off with ice water <laughs> and have just as a, a summer clothes. And he said, these people are crazy. And I'm gone and I'm going to ride my race, right? And I come back and I'm frozen. I can't even speak. My lips numb. <laughs> my fingers. And these guys say, what a beautiful, what a beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now I climatize it. Now I kind of saw what they mean, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, it's you're been a lot of years, years man. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. There's a lot. There's a lot of people. A lot of jockeys. A lot. Well, a lot of people. Once they come to Canada, they're, they're very not too rare. Not too often they they leave. They kind of fall in love. What's What's your feeling like with, with Canada and and everything else? Living no, here in Canada. I, I enjoyed it and funny enough I was out today who was with some friend I mean talking and said what I really enjoy about I really enjoy the seasons, you know. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the, the, the four seasons, you know, so back in the tropics it's just tropics. It's mm -hmm. just hot, hot and hotter, okay. you know. Yeah. Can that get real hot too? Yeah. <laughs> can that get boiling, man? Yeah. Um, what what, yeah. what really surprised me about Trinidad when you know driving in the mountains though the mountains is really nice. Cool, yeah, up Santa Cruz. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's real nice, man. Is is there yeah. somewhere else that you call home besides, uh, say, Canada? Is there another home now, or is it this is home? Canada, Canada is, is home, man. Yeah. Definitely home. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nice, nice. Um, uh, this show is going for two and a half hours, you know, guys. Oh, oh. Yes. I, you see, I, here, here's a job, you, Emil. Emil, are you here's sure? a job. <laughs> I'm, I'm the, I'm the, the clocker. So, so I usually check the time, but I am resisting talking about time because people always give me a bad rap for talking about time. So I, I'm resisting talking about time. So I'm not okay. even going to remind you about time. I, I just look on the thing there and I see this big red meter <laughs> over Derek's head there. <laughs> but I mean I, I'm I'm surprised I'm sure I thought people thought that we won't get an hour out of you. Because you're no, not known a lot to of talking, yeah. You you're not known to be a talker man. <laughs> yeah. Good man. you can't be for two hours. Come on um, Derek get me for another 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, no, again, something I wanted to say keep flicking up, and then when I think of it, we we go into a topic and it it's, it goes away and I can't get it again. That's that's not seven <laughs> That's what really is. Don't worry about it. It's happening all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I I wanna John, Sean sent me an update on one of your horses that won the Queen's Play, and um. I wanted to show it to you so that you can can see who, what he's doing right now. This one is um uh, can you guess? Is it just up? Yeah. Look very small. <laughs> they have they have him on a diet. <laughs> he's, in, <laughs> he, he's he's in Iraq. Oh, <laughs> no grass there. What I, thought, is... I, I thought he went to Australia. He never went to Australia? I don't know. He got to Iraq. I was shocked. How does a yeah. horse like Eden Wool get to Iraq? Like, like, what is going on over there? I guess you probably wouldn't know, but I'm just <laughs> I'm just posing a question. Maybe one of the people who's watching could, could answer that, you know? I didn't, I, didn't have even, I didn't even know they have races out there. Well, <laughs> I don't think he's racing right now. How old is, no, is I, that I, horse? I, I'm talking for breeding, yeah? Cause oh, okay. Right, right, right. He's going, right, right, right. He's going for breeding. I've, you know I've never heard about racing in Iraq, but uh, I know I, I got a friend from Iraq who who's told me a lot of stories about going over the mountains horseback. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's another uh, show altogether, so... <laughs> Mm. Yeah, so, but the horses are going over mountains like that would be Arabians. They can handle yeah, that. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. They can go the mileage and the roughness. You know, all he's he can be a right horse because he had he would have had thoroughbred problems. Mm -hmm. True. It's quite but interesting. Other, but other than those two Queen's Pledge winners, which which other races would have um, 
Madam. Tickle your fancy. Um, Randy Thompson, man. Dubai, Dubai. That's the Dubai guy. Hey, Randy My guy. Thompson. Yeah. Barber. You know, it had, it had um, I think that's you know, what he won the sprint race. Pardon me? No, I had one one year, was, I had a, a chance to go to Dubai, and the horse won, you know, our new recruit okay. to John Sadler. Right? Uh -huh. I went to California, I think it was 2008 or something. Uh -huh. I went to California, and I know, because I used to ride a fair bit of horses plus for John. Now, we had some, some nice winners. We, when Delmar started in 99, I think we won the opening stakes on the day. And the same one, I had a horse, our new recruit, and I rode it at Santa Anita in a stake, first time out on, on, on the turf down the hill. Uh -huh. And we finished third, get beaten uh, like a short, by a neck and a close finish, we finished third. And then they said it was going to Dubai or... They were hoping to go to Dubai. Uh -huh. So then I asked John, and John said, um, no, nah, you're going to use um, Tyler, Tyler Bays. Okay. And then I was out on the track working a horse. So then you know, we commit out to ride a horse for for Bafford in the New, New Mexico Derby, mm -hmm. the favorite. And if it wins the New Mexico Derby, we can ride it in the Kentucky Derby. Okay. I was a 95 favorite. Right. And so I was on track working a horse, I think for, for Bob. When I come back, um, no, while I was on track, John showed me, what about that Dubai race? I said, you said you're using Tyler. He said, no. He said, are you open? I said, let me get back. Mm -hmm. So I showed them when I get back. So in the meanwhile, he saw my agent, and she had, um, she told him that we we got Bob horse, but it was a tough decision for I can't really, I mean, if it was me, yeah. the chance to go to Dubai, I wouldn't have think. But then going going to the Kentucky Derby, the horse is ninety five favorite yeah. in New Mexico. And he's going to he's going to the Kentucky Derby, and we ride him too. So it was a tough choice for her, and we committed to Bob. But I know Bob wouldn't mind me. I asked him; he didn't have a problem to go to Dubai. Anyhow, the horse won the race. Our new recruit won the Dubai, the two million dollars spent. <laughs> wow! I, I can and, see now why you would and my, that story. My uh, my horse ran for it out in New Mexico. I never made it. Wow! So that's the thing about horse racing: you gamble yeah. sometimes, and you gamble yeah. wrong and lose, man. But I know if I was there, I would have um to go to Dubai is once in a lifetime, Sean. You yes, know that? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I, yes, I yes. wouldn't. Have I would have. Now, the, the, now, do you? Do you do I know Bob wouldn't wouldn't let wouldn't give me no trouble. Do you let mm. me out? Now, do, do you still have the same agent from all them years, or this you changed agents over the um, years? No, I, I stick with one guy, but now he's got. So I, I right now, I don't have. I have a new agent. Okay, but you know my policy, Sean. Is you know I started off first with Beverly, Beverly yes. Morris, and how I happened to see you know I, I'm out there in the morning early. And I said, this girl, is she's as hungry as me because I'm going there early. Yeah. I get to track 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, is the only right there. I'm, I'm gapping or six or three. Yeah. I don't mind. I want to get no worse. Mm -hmm. And she was out there in the mornings. And then I finally said, you know, I'm going to ask her. And she was new. What so become of her, though? What become of her? I don't know. Well, everybody, everybody asks a question. I know she's, she's out doing something else away from the office. Uh -huh. And then how I end up with Neil. Neil was in the jocks room. Yeah, he's working yes, in the jocks Neil. room. Yeah, I asked him. Um, I say, how about? I say, how about you? You wanna be my agent? He said, yeah. I said, no. I said seriously. He said, then I took him out to the room and I bring yeah, him out. Yeah, I remember and that. Was, yeah, and I stayed with him until for a long time. Yeah, until just. But he got the perfect personality for agent, though. He got to admit that, man. No, well, I, 
you know, so I did to, I to, one thing I told Beverly when I started and I'm with Neil. I said, Neil, only, only one thing I want you to do. I said, you dress properly. I said, because if you're working in an office or whatever, you have to dress properly. I want you to dress properly, come to work, and I want you to say good morning and hello to everybody. I don't want you going to go into the barn like ages are coming to the barn and say, hey, where's John? Where's John yeah. the trainer? And I'm going to say hello or good morning to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And hence yeah. the reason hence the reason he got so well, every groom in the barn. I said because I said those grooms in the barn will tell you there's something good in the barn or whatever. It's you know, da, da, da. Right. I said I don't care what it looked like or it smell like. I said I don't want you to go <laughs> to the barn and say, I want is Glenn the trainer here? I said no, say good morning to him first and then go on from there. Man, listen. And that's how <laughs> hence and that's how we gain all the respect too, because you know, he did it the right way. But he was a nice guy, though. Even when yeah. he spin you, when he spin yeah. you, and you, you, you curse <laughs> him now. You can cuss him, and he's all right, stallion, all right, stallion, stallion. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. And you just all he can do is just laugh. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. Such a good him and Tom Patton, man. They're my two favorite guys, man. Tom Patton. You can't get angry with those guys. Those guys, man, got such good personalities that nothing don't bother them. You know what I mean? Nothing. Now, have you written? I mean, have you written in? Well, this is a rhetorical question, I guess. But have you written in the Kentucky Derby? No. Because the reason why I asked that is because I, I've seen somewhere that they said I think Patrick Husband was the only Caribbean jockey to ever ridden in the I Derby. Would think, yeah, I would think so. Yeah. As far as as I know, the only Caribbean person in our era that. That our generation would know of is is, is that is that something that you, that you would have really loved to do? You know, I think every every writer, every writer, even more so in no every in North America, mm -hmm. and like you know, like even like we in, that grew up in in Barbados and Trinidad and, and came out to North America, that would. That was always on the top of our list anyway, mm -hmm. to be able to ride a Kentucky Derby. When you think of it, you know, there, there are thousands of horses being run through the sale every year. And only 16 or 17 are making the Kentucky Derby. So that is one hell of an achievement to mm -hmm. be in order to get a horse to make it to the Derby. As a trainer, to have a horse. And as an owner, to have a horse to make it to the Derby. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the guy spent tens of millions of dollars on a get, trying to get a horse to make it to the Derby. And a guy would, would probably get a horse free that nobody wanted to make it to the derby. Mm -hmm. So to be able to get a ride in the derby, it's just like the Queen's Plate. Same thing. We have 1,000 horses that bred here every year. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to make it to the Queen's Plate. You know, from the time you go to stud as, as, you're, you're, as a breeder and as an owner, you hope you, you have up a horse to be a superstar, even more so a plate horse to make it to the plate. Mm -hmm. And it's only 16 or 17 and them is going to make it to the plate. So. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Qu question. Because, uh, I mean, like you guys, like most race fans in Barbados, uh, the ones who connected to the Caribbean, uh, they know you and they, they speak highly of you. Um, is it the same uh, way like that in Trinidad and Guyana when um, – they speak of Emir and Sami, and do you find that, or do you think that that we uh, we put our top athletes like yourself and and all the other top ones from the Caribbean in a good league of uh, of I don't know accomplished jockeys and yeah. people? Without, without a doubt, um, Derek, I think very much so. The, the trend out, and I mean, I don't know, I don't. You know, of Guyana, I don't know how many of them know. They consider me as a Guyanese. Mm -hmm. I think there's a big debate <laughs> among some of the racing people whether I'm, I'm Trini or Guyanese. But the, the true fact, even my cousin, who is my, my cousin, my, my first cousin, he had an argument with a friend, with another one of his friends that he knows. And yet, still, when he, he spoke to me, 
I'm, I'm actually I'm Trinidadian born. I'm not Guyanese born. I knew mm-hmm. back then that I was Guyanese because we are first cousins. Mm-hmm. You know, and I grew up in Guyana, but so I don't think um, Guyanese know me so much as uh, as a as a jockey. It's more Trinidadian than Barbadian. Yeah. Especially with racing down there too. I mean, yeah, yeah. racing it's down there whole, already. It's yeah, small. it's a whole different, like you say. It's, um, it's not, um, what's the right word? Centralized, not centralized. Yeah. It's not proper. It's more, um, yeah. Country, country-ish. <laughs> it's not on the books. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not, that's no. not the right word I'm looking for though. One thing I want to ask you because you know, I mean, we're talking things and think writing. I, I, I like to ask jockeys this question What, um, writing and Mirage, what has um, writing at the garrison done to your career, helping you to be a better jockey? You know, the thing about the garrison. It's like every track is different. And I think about what I enjoy writing about the garrison is, is, is either you, in front, if you have the horse taken in the front, whether, mm-hmm. whatever caliber race it is, mm-hmm. or, or you're in the back and wait for the stretch. And that, mm-hmm. was, that was my pattern writing in Barbados. If I couldn't be on the lead or close in the first three, mm-hmm. I hope I was in the back of the pack, especially in the longer races, mm-hmm. because you know how sharp the track is. Could you beat me in a race one time? I still, I'm still haunted by it. <laughs> you laughing? <laughs> I, I, I did the barber right to shave you. You shaved me. I got shaved. I got shaved, man. I got shaved. Yeah. I shaved you back a few times afterwards, but that particular one, man. I lost it, John. I said I managed to shave you back a couple of times, but but I that know, particular one. Nice he just um weapon he's off his his um his phone just kind of fell a little bit i think his phone just twisted so it's just a matter of you know retwisting it still there i hope how you open it i hope he he understands that it's not washed up anything crazy because uh (laughs) i can hear him It would be a nice sound bite, but might not yeah, be too me. pleasant. <laughs> I'm coming back. All right, brother. I'm coming back. <laughs> Hola, Thomas. <laughs> yes, yes. Here we go. <laughs> no, I remember. Could the same thing you said? Yes, no. You used to either go to close or come from behind. Me. You rode a horse called Night Life. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah, give it see. And you. The thing about it was, I didn't mind getting the beat because I thought it was beaten for a long time, long way out of the race. But when I saw the race and saw that you stayed on the rail and everybody went on Bush Hill and you can't write up the gut. Yeah. If you had to go around one horse, you could have win that race. Yeah. So <laughs> you're right. You, you used to do things like that. You used to, one thing, I guess you always. You know, the, the even rail. though from riding in Trinidad and Barbados, and and the turf especially because the turf you know stayed on the rail is the way yeah. to, is the way to go but you know yeah. we came to north america we came to canada and the people they, they would get off the rail and you know yes and we we still in i would think myself and patrick osborne's we still in the habit we just can't go wide around the turn. For some strange mm-hmm. reason, we just, I just can't go seven, eight wide around the turn. I had to tap out and wait. And, and there's a few races I know, quite a few races, I'd probably if I went sweeping around the turn, five, six wide, yeah. in matter one, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And I've, I've seen him done the same thing many times. Mm-hmm. I think we get into talking a few times too about the same thing. And we, mm-hmm. we both said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Just can't, we just can't go wide, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because going by the garrison was a death sentence. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, you, you, you can lose like 10 lengths when you when you go out there. Yeah. So it's you like not you lose race. 10 lengths, you lose the race. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I don't imagine that you guys uh, tell all your secrets. So, but do you guys share uh, 
any tips uh, amongst each other as jockeys uh, about how you can win? I, I'm pretty sure you don't, but I'm just throwing it out there. Do you? You know, Derek, when you see this, one of my, my things, you know, guys watching replays in the room, right? You hear them yelling, oh, I could have done this. Look at this horse. He's logging in. He's logging out. You know, like, damn, if the... I'd be watching replays and you wouldn't hear a moot out of me. But I'm listening to everybody to hear. And since the situation comes up, if I, I'm going to ride that or get a chance to ride that horse or or I'm in a race with, against that horse, hmm. I could know, well, maybe this, this, oh, I remember this horse, he logs in so I can get out of his way or keep hmm. him on. Keep him in that position where he he can't get now. If I happen to get a ride, then I know. I maybe I go and say to the trainer, you know, that or that. Uh, maybe you should try this. What mm-hmm. to help him, you know? Yes, yes. And you don't hear nothing out of me, so you can't you can't go if you get my right to go and mm-hmm. say well something you know this something that you heard this or or do or whatever. So, right, it's, right, it's right, right, right. That's that right. my secret watching my when I watch replays against a whole bunch of guys watching watching mm-hmm. the replays and hear them carrying on, you know. Is that then experience talking, experience you, you've learned that from experience to, to just no, I, the, no Sean, you know that's always been my way. Yeah, I, I don't you don't ever hear me say anything. Yeah, it's true. You know, I mean I remember writing through Trendad and over the years and guys will say come back in after race or sometime we out whatever Sunday playing cricket or whatever. So then, then we get into talk and I said, you know, I never hear you scream in a race yet. I never hear you shout in a race. Or you mm-hmm. watch you play, I never hear you say anything. What happened? I said, just looking and observing the race. <laughs> I think we asked this question um, to a few people before, but uh, I'm going to ask you, um, what are your thoughts about the young jockeys um, in in uh in your what's it called sean colony yeah colony right i'm trying to get used to all the 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 terms but (laughs) what what are your thoughts on those guys and um how do you see them um progressing and um so forth you know like like i think i I heard chris saying because he's not writing as much and not being as he he doesn't feel the competition and just doesn't get involved so i mean i'm not writing as much so I'm not really focused on the races like I used to. Mm-hmm. But from what I see, the other times I watch the race, I, I think I think the young guys are very are very competitive. Mm-hmm. They I, I can't I think they ride I would ride them on a horse if I, that I own. Mm-hmm. And and they do a good job here. Mm-hmm. And 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 my thing in being coming from, from, from the islands British colony, so to speak. And brought up the British way in racing. I believe in weight. Yeah. So of the of the top riders we have riding at what by now. Um, the two the two young the two Japanese kids they're mm-hmm. they're very light. So if I should have a horse, if I should have a horse, I recommend that. Somebody to, to use a rider, I would use those guys because I know they will they can do the weight. Mm-hmm. So, so in that case, how how do and how they are ride, they and and they also I know I'll get a good ride because I like the way they they ride. They're very they ride very competitive and very aggressive. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. What, what's what's going on in Canada right now? Where I I don't see a lot of Canadian riders. Where are they? I don't know, you know, Sean, in our time, you know how tough it was to be able to get through into Canada. Yeah, yeah. No, rough. No, it's. You go beg, you, they're begging people to come because there's no writers. Yeah. No. Now you just come from America and all, and the, so long as you're Canadian, you don't worry anymore. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think is the reason why a lot of young Canadian men or women are not coming through the system? Uh, I don't, you know, in North America in the whole, you know, if you look back at, at the writers that, that you can recall, mm-hmm. there's really never generally much Canadians or Americans. There's always 
whether it be um, Puerto Ricans or South Americans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or so Spanish guys so to speak so in coming out of um, out of South America and Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and and Canada Canada had morally Canadians and then I guess in the in the 90s the 2000s from guys from the islands and Caribbeans And and now in recent years, uh, now total Americans, well, Americans, Spanish Americans, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. But in, one thing about Canada, we always had a lot of uh, female writers. Yes, yes. And, and I think Canadians, female writers, kind of stand out and and help <clears throat> help the whole world, so to speak. I mean, you can't get better than Emma Jane Wilson, man. No. I mean, she's better than most boys in Canada right now. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, Emil. Uh, so, what do you? What are your thoughts on 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 the female writers since you brought it up uh, compared to to um, you know the guys and compared to the you know? I I I think the girls write write very well. They're very you know they're they're competitive and they can do. They can do the job good as, as as anybody else, and I and I personally think some horses would would run better for the girls, mm -hmm. and vice versa too. You know, mm -hmm. it's true. why is that? I, I don't understand. It's just it's just nature. Right. It's just in the day they feel they have a, a whole. They can feel the vibes of of, of a, a feminine on their back, mm -hmm. and a whole different feel and a whole different hands. It's totally mm -hmm. different, and I, I, I wouldn't. Um, it's a soft touch. It's a soft yeah, touch. I, I wouldn't hesitate to use a, 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 a feminine rider on my horse at all if I should ever own a horse or train mm -hmm. horses. Mm -hmm. Is a girl and feminine rider the same thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I just want to be clear, just in case you were, you know, I, I, I sometimes there's some underlying things there that I miss. So I just want to <laughs> clear that up. <laughs> you, you better look for the switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! No, no, but the, um, no, I, I, what I really like about Canada, it stands out, and it, it, I think it helped throughout the world to bring so much more women in, involved yeah. in in being competitive as jockeys, as riders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you know, I think just the other day I was watching some Australian racing, mm -hmm. and I was surprised to see how many more girls competing in Australia. Yes, yes, yes. yes. There was not nobody could know much when coming to feminine riders, the 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 girl, the lady jockeys, the jockets mm -hmm. on the planet than than Canada. Mm -hmm. We had we had them outnumbered by many. Yes. Yes. And I think they should be proud of themselves, you know, because they're, it, it's good for the racing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do Do you enjoy watching racing, or are you you're more of an involved kind of guy? Well, I I I I'm more involved. I enjoy com being competitive, but I really enjoy watching the racing too. So I still I still um have all the racing channels. Mm -hmm. So I go through. I watch them all. I even watch Australia racing all through the night. Mm -hmm. I get up in the night from two o'clock in the morning and right. <laughs> there's so many. There's so many race. So many racing in Australia. Yes, a lot. Oh, there's Big. tracks all over and all kind of tracks. Was shown. Yeah. You talk about bush tracks. You want to see bush tracks? You go to Australia. <laughs> I rode. I rode at a bush track called Mount Barker. In Perth, <laughs> we had to fly by Cessna plane to get there. I never forget that. And then when I rode at the Gold Coast track in Brisbane, that was a B track when it was there. But now I I, I hear million dollar races running there now. Yeah, that's a big so, track. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it had all the facilities of a big track. It was yeah. new, so I just think with time, you know, it just needed to. Um, yeah, yeah, but. Well, of course, it was nice, man. It was really nice. 
really nice. Yeah, Julia can't tell. My boys and tell us who some of the ladies are who really did well at Woodbine. <laughs> so what what's the what's the I know you say you, you don't have no plans of retiring. You're just gonna keep keep going at it. Uh but I guess as this as uh April is around the corner, you must feel really excited then about this season coming. And what I want to yeah. say like at Fort Erie, because every year we hear all these stories about Fort Erie and um is what what is Fort Erie race race strap? like now you know like i said i i don't spend no kind of time out there in the morning so i, I know racing it, it's nice to track the surface and i've always said you know for very of all the dirt tracks i've ridden on for three surface is by far the best race track i've ever ridden on surface wise mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's kind to the horses yeah it's exceptionally nice. Our, our dirt track at Fort Erie. Mm -hmm. They really have a nice surface. And the paddock area and the barns in the morning, like I said, um, Derek, I, I really don't be in the, out there in the mornings. Mm -hmm. So I really can't answer your question there. Okay. Mm. Oh, um, so I think we, we touch on family. We touch on on uh, on future. Um, Trying to see if there's something that 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 one of my friends talked about early in the week, and I forgot because people ask me these questions to ask the guys when they come on, and I try my best to remember. Um, so you know, we get caught up in so many conversations that yeah. uh, sometimes I just forget. Um, Emil's answered everything tonight, though. He he hasn't he hasn't he hasn't backed up anything, man. I even find the switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so and, and there used to be like um, there was a time in Woodbine used to do these these uh, these what they call it, not sprints they call them squints or something these very short races with with two year olds oh, they're yeah. like uh, like uh, two, two for long, long or something yeah, like yeah. that yeah do you as a as a uh, competitive jockey, do you do you like those kind of races, it, or does it matter, or any kind of competition is is good for you? Like, it, what's I, your I, I don't think it's about a, a bad idea to start off the horses on the two um, quarter mile races. So mm -hmm. Over the years of um, because we we do have them out in um on the west coast in California. Mm -hmm. This first five or six two-year races or quarter-mile races. Because mm -hmm. I remember I remember riding a, riding a few and winning a few for Wesley Ward out of San Benito. Mm -hmm. You rode for some of the big, biggest trainers out there, man. No, I, I was, like I said, you know, I went to California and it was like a dream come true. I was riding for forever, you know, like when I said, when I, that, that spring meet in Hollywood when I was doing great, I was riding first call for everybody out out in the Santinia circuit, including yeah, Bob Bafford and then like you said we're, we're gonna ask you now, right? Is that do you feel it's bad luck then when those sort of accidents happen where you got hurt and then everything gets go upside down? I mean you know who's the best person who's be the best person to answer that question? My agent agent. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> when he heard I fell, man, he, the way he went on, he went ballistic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, that, you know, I, I had Brian Beach as my agent too. Right, right. Good evening. Wow, that's a really thin yeah. line, man. To know that you that close to winning a two oh, million man. dollar race and stuff yeah. like that happened, yeah. finger broken, stuff yeah. like that, you know. How much how much injuries you had in that space of time? Of you know, it was funny, you know, like Sean, I said, I rode for 19 years without breaking a bone, you know, right. without breaking right. a bone. Yes. And you know, all of a sudden I took, I make a collective. <laughs> no, because it felt like every time you go on a horse, something yeah, happened. All of a sudden, yeah, I took, I took some ugly falls. I took some, some knockout falls. I mean, I, I was never knocked out in my life. Until that storm, the barricade horse. Yeah, I remember that. that. That horse, I was telling about that horse, Doyle. Yes. And then I rode a horse, a Tino, on the 
the uh, the turf one day too. The snap a leg and knock me out. Now we we always see um, like Caribbean guys do well on turf. Um, is it something that you get pumped up for, or is it just happens? Like to you know, for a rise on the turf versus sand or poly track. You know that that's a question of, of quite a few people have asked the question: is what do you like dirt? Do you like right now dirt, turf, or poly? And my answer to that question is always this: whichever surface I have the best horse on. I will enjoy riding on that surface. <laughs> the thing, but I, I look forward to turf racing because I, I, I think I have a little, because of our, because of my experience riding, you know, starting up riding on the turf in, in Barbaros and Trinidad. But what's your I, thing? Do you think the difference riding the, there's no like three surfaces now. We got the poly, you got the yeah. dirt, you got the turf. Yeah. I mean, and then you also have the artificial turf, which is that inner turf of woodbine. That's artificial? Well, sure? yes. Because remember, it used to be a harness track, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the turf they put on it okay. can be can be original turf. But it's, it's actually grass, isn't it? It is grass, but it's not. Oh, okay. It's not like, let's say, like, like the garrison grass because oh, it's God. not deep, right? Yeah, mm. <laughs> it's a whole, it's a whole different, right? It's a whole horse that Sean you would know over the years, right? Like he's mm. no, no, man, I know. Yeah, anyhow, you might have an idea because you know at the training track it would bind. Yeah, when you train on that training track, the horses work extraordinary. Yeah, and when you go out and run on the turf out on the martial turf. Mm. or our big turf course here. They don't run the same way because you know why? Because it's totally a different surface. Yes. And I've over the years had horses where they work exceptionally good and then go out on their turf. And I, I always said to the trainer, don't give up. Take them across the border, run them on one of those surfaces out there across the border because that's the original turf where, where the grass are grown from the dirt and not mm. like our our turf where it's it's, 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 it's not it's, uh, rolled out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. I know what you mean. Yes, that rolled out stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I've always heard people saying that that the Marshall, the, you know, the big turf. Yeah. That that surface out there is different to the the last, yeah, the inside the last part. Yes, yeah. yes. I heard. I always hear those guys say that. When you ride, you can actually feel it too, and then hence the reason horses see some horses put out on the turf in the train. On the train turf from work extraordinary, and then they yeah. they put them out in the afternoon and don't run a jump. Yes, yes. And that's the main reason. Yes. And now it's even worse now with the inner turf we have now woodbine. Yes. The same thing too. They put them on the turf in the train train turf in the morning, and then they put them on that turf, which I which I call an artificial turf. Mm. And they don't run, and they wonder why. And mm. that's the only reason why. Yes. I don't understand what you mean by that because that that's like strips rolled out and yeah, and you don't and get it's a total different feel because the horses don't get to to, to grab on the turf yeah. like a proper turf like like the training turf we have. Okay, it's, it's amazing how um these kind of little stuff. simple things. Yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah. you have to look and you know as a trainer, you know, you sit down and you wonder why your horse didn't perform. Mm -hmm. you, you, all these things you had to click, you know, yes, look into yes, and see, yes. okay? Because it's a whole bunch of different things. Hmm. Well, that's really interesting. Uh, it's good information that you shared there, I guess. Because I, I guess better yeah. on the EP Taylor than on the inner turf. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that explains a lot, I guess, to some people too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he like, like our EP Taylor too. Turf farm, Sean. You go down yeah. the back, but you see some horses are not running, yeah. and then all of a sudden they straighten up where they hit the original turf. Yeah, see them on a turn into a whole different horse. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's the main reason, and vice versa. You see some horses going down that back stretch where they enjoy that artificial kind of turf, and then when they hit the original turf where it is a different grip and a different yeah. feel, yeah, they back off. Yeah. Yes, it, I mean, those are things that you really got to look at when you, um, 
playing the ponies, I guess. I mean, it's amazing. What 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 does what does Emil Ramsami do when he's not uh, involved in horse racing? Uh, I know last week Patrick said he loved animals and he's out there. He's not watching TV stuff like that. Chris chills. You know, people do different okay. things. What are you doing? You know, my policy, right? I, I I'm a home person. I like being home. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike the guys, they get together and go out. Me, I wanna. I want to go home. Mm -hmm. I want to get home. The kids were here. I enjoy the kids. Now, now just Lisa and I. I want to get home to Lisa. I don't want to leave Lisa home by herself. Mm -hmm. So I I just, I come home. I like being home. And I, whatever, I just enjoy being home. I have you a part of home. I have a, a African gray. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so I enjoy him. Uh -huh. He talks. Yeah, you know they're, they're really smart. You know, exceptionally yeah. smart. He's really the best talking parrot. Uh -huh. And they say they have a knowledge of a five-year-old, and they really do because this this bird is so smart. <laughs> and if you guys should come in in my house and hear him speak, you wouldn't know if it's me. <laughs> he speaks in my accent. Tone, my accent, uh -huh. and all my little tricks. You wouldn't. <laughs> it be in, no. It'd be almost impossible for you to distinguish. Mm -hmm. I had Nathan here one a couple of weeks. And so when he comes down in the morning, he say, Good morning. How are you? <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't understand. He jumped. <laughs> he speaks in my accent on my tone. Uh, uh, <laughs> and he and he knows good morning. You know, like you yeah. know, like the part, you know, them green them green part to say hi or whatever yeah. morning and time of the day. He only say good morning in the morning. Okay. okay. Like night, he knows good night, and he knows what if I go to the fridge and I, at, at a certain time, and, yeah. I, and, he, and you know, I take water. He knows it's time for bed. He can say good night. See ya. <laughs> smart. <laughs> no, he's wicked smart. You so when, when, I come you... Home, when I come home and open the door, I say, "Yo, Wam." Mm. So, so as soon as he hear the door, I have a little chime. He say, "Yo, Wam." <laughs> no, he's very smart. You still live in wow. Brampton? Yeah, still in yeah. S same house. Yeah, yeah. Wow, we As know. Yeah, we there for years, man. Yeah, for since two thousand. Yeah. Wow, man. So you just chill, just chill at home. That's 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 amazing. Yeah. Well, um, well, what's what else can you, Sean? Go ahead. What else? Do you, no, you I think say? I I think we've got me we squeeze this. No, you know why? I just want to thank um the whole Barbados Turf Club situation with that incident I had with my mm -hmm. broken shoulder mm -hmm. for all the um all I've done and all you know, especially Miss Pierce, mm -hmm. all the work she went out of her way to help. Well, I mean, you're one of our legends, man. You, you don't like a legend yeah. getting hurt on our. our... <laughs> yeah. I'm happy well, to hear the you well. You really, you really got so, be, so before you go, I, I just want to, I know I've mentioned this before, but I want to say it again. So on behalf of my buddy who passed away, I want to say, man, look, congratulations so far for all you've done, uh, your all your accomplishments. Um, I mean, for him, uh, for people around him, you know, there's a lot of people you might not hear all the time, but there's a lot of people who still cheer for you and still hold you on a high respect when it comes to being a jockey and, and, for, and for all the wins and the accomplishments that you, you have done. You know what I mean? Because I've always said this and I said this last week and I'll say over and over that sometimes we don't always give our jockeys the credit that they deserve. You know, because these are ambassadors that go out. No matter how you guys do it, you still do it. And we still remember you. You guys are good at what you do. People sometimes forget because, you know, as you go on in life, it's quick to write people off. But I just want to say thank you. Uh, there's a lot of people who still root for you, a lot of people who still cheer for you. And um, and good luck the rest of the way, man. All right. Thank you all so much, Sean. Thanks for having me on the show. And thanks for... No Barbados and Trinidad and all your fans looking on and all your support. It was great and I enjoyed the show. Thank you very much. I mean, that's great, man. 
Thank you, man. All right. Don't take care. Yeah, keep in touch. Keep your boss. Yeah, man. Our, our, our have right, a blessed night. Right. Nice chat to meet you. And everybody here. Has show. Cheers. Like Cheers, you said, brother. peace out. Yes, I hear. Bye. 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 All love, man. All right. The great Emmy Ramsami. Yes, uh, people got what they wanted because uh, there's a lot of people who were saying uh, they want they, they want to see Emil, and now now they've they've gotten to see Emil. So, uh, and what's, there you go. What's more surprising is Emil talks a lot. Emil, <laughs> <laughs> Emil, <laughs> all right, the most I've heard Emil Raz, I talk try five plus years. I know him. It's true. Emil's not. And me don't talk. That was I hear him talk myself, and I know him for more years than that. So I'm just happy that he, he's um, you know, he's at the age now where he understands that it's good to hear greats like him have this say. You know what I mean? I really, really appreciate it. For you know, he did this show, and it's something I remember forever, man. Because he's a guy that all of us in the islands looked up to because he was in our you know, you know, he wasn't like a Venice Richards or Charlie Jones because they were older guys. He was, he started with us, you know, he started with us and it's to see any guy who started in our era, is, you like to see where they, they ended up and how, how well they've done. So cheers to Emil. Uh, I know, um, you know, you always, like for me growing up, you always hear Emil, you know, you hear this, you know, the, the names. So the, those are names that people, um gravitate to and those are names that people don't forget you know yeah. so it's good to see that he's still kicking it around um i hope that he's able to get through the season and the seasons uh safely because as you get older you know the injuries don't get any easier and yeah. um we know with this game they come injuries and uh hopefully uh you make it through safely at this age you really can't afford to get injured that's the truth so i mean he doesn't write that much now, so you know that's a plus. Yeah, you absolutely. Don't, you don't, you know, like it's less chances of him getting hurt. So we wish him well, though. That's right. Well, on that note, uh, that's our show. Uh, is there anything you want to say before we leave? That's it, man. Um, all I can say is good luck to everybody for the rest of the week, and um, whatever will be, will be. All right. Um, as the words of uh, De Silva, good luck to everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Peace. All right.